on this night. No, sir. We got one of the great rivalries in Mid-American Conference history. Western Michigan, the defending conference champs at home at Waldo Stadium, welcoming in their neighbors from 134 miles up the road. Central Michigan, the Chippewas in town in what should be a battle right down to the bitter end here at Waldo Stadium. All playing for the Cannon Trophy up for grabs tonight. Boy, this really is a great rivalry. They've been going at it 88 times they've played over 110 years. What's at stake? The Cannon Trophy. They've awarded it in nine previous occasions. Five have gone to Western Michigan, four times to Central. Western has had a lot of success of late. So much success, as a matter of fact, the senior class for Central is looking for their first win. Both these head coaches in tonight's game have played in this game at separate times back in their playing days. Hello, everybody. I'm Chris Cotter alongside Desmond Howard. Both of us bespeckled so we can watch the game and call it for you today. <laughs> Desmond, you know a little bit about rivalries in the state of Michigan, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. I tell you what, the most important game on any team's regular season schedule is their rivalry, and it is not even close. Now, some coaches, they've been handling a little different. When I was at Michigan, we knew. Notre Dame week, special week. Ohio State week, big week. Then some coaches, they may downplay it. They want to make it seem like it's a normal week, but I don't care which approach they use, it's going to get chippy tonight, Chris. Well, the coaches and players at Western Michigan haven't downplayed it a little bit, and maybe that's because they don't want to put too much pressure on their starting quarterback tonight. He's making his first career start. He's a true freshman. His name is Reese Goddard. Comes our way by way of Missouri. Joining us right now on the field, the third member of our party is Quinn Kesnick down there from one of this freshman sensation. Quinn? Goddard hasn't lost a football game in a long time. Kirkwood High School in St. Louis, he led that team to a state championship. He's known as a gunslinger, a dual threat guy. Head coach Tim Lester told me his focus tonight is just make sure that he stays like himself. He says if he's not smiling and having fun, I'm taking you out of the ball game. He plays with that high school swagger, and I watched his highlight tape. He's not afraid to take chances. He's got the body type, Chris, of a Baker Mayfield of Oklahoma or Trace McSorley of Penn State. Very stocky and strong. Yeah, you know, this team, Des, loves to run the football. And one of the things that Goddard is going to have is a dynamic backfield behind him to take some of the pressure off him during this game. He's very fortunate to have two really good running backs, Jarvan Franklin and Jamari Bogan. Franklin, he's the elder statesman of the group. He's put a lot of football here, really good in between the tackles, and he's an excellent receiver out of the backfield, great in pass pro. And Bogan, Bogan's a guy who's very effective in short yardage plays. He can find a crease and explode right through it. Two really good running backs for Goddard. Let's turn our attention to the Chippewas and, and let's talk about this senior class of yet to beat Western in this rivalry so it means a lot to them this game and particularly Tyler Conklin. He's a tight end who lines up all over the field, really gives him a dynamic presence. Yeah, it's good to have uh, Conklin back. He's a guy, it's almost on four. It's just like, un, it's unfair to call him a tight end because he's so versatile, he's so dynamic. They're going to attach him, detach him, move him all around the field. He's a nightmare matchup for linebackers and safeties and he's finally getting healthy now so I'm really excited I had to see Tyler Co Conklin in this game tonight, Chris. Yeah, he missed the first five games of the year. In the three games he's been back, four touchdowns for Conklin. So this guy can produce. Midweek Maction coming your way on ESPN. Waldo Stadium, the site of our Midweek Maction. This week, Central Michigan, Western Michigan, two rivals separated by just about two hours' drive from each other. Tonight's game being played here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. A little chilly, a little bit of rain. Not stopping folks from coming out. Looking forward to a big-time game tonight. Important game for both these teams, too, as they both look to become ball eligible. Central still a couple of wins away. Western, if they win tonight, that's win number six for them on this season. But still a lot to play for within the conference as well as Western Michigan comes in at 3-1. and one. Central 2-2 two and two so far on the year. Well, we're all looking forward to seeing this freshman quarterback, Reese Goddard, playing for Western Michigan tonight. Central won the toss. They deferred until the second half. So we're going to get our opportunity, Des, yeah. to see Reese Goddard right away. And we're going to get our opportunity to see one of the great return men in college football history yes. in this game when you talk about a, a kid by the name of Darius Phillips, number four for West. Yes, I'm very excited to see uh, Darius Phillips. I want to see if they're going to kick the ball to him. I mean, he's exciting, electric. He came here actually as an offensive player. They recruited him as a slot player to play the slot position. He made the transition to defensive back, and he's just been outstanding still in the return game. So they're going to give him an opportunity tonight. Let's go. An opportunity. Caden Keon with the kick to Phillips. And he finds a little bit of room down the left side, gets out to about the 34-yard line. 
This Western Michigan offense is going to be led by Reese Goddard. The true freshman came in in relief 10 days ago in their win against Eastern Michigan, but this is his first collegiate start. I tell you what, I'm so excited to watch this young man. After the coaches' meetings we had with Tim Lester and the offensive coordinator Kevin Johns, they seemed kind of giddy to get this young man on the field, see how he was going to respond tonight. They're so excited because what he's been able to do at practice has just wooed everybody. It's a situation where I think it's like, hey, we don't know if it's going to be good or bad, <laughs> but it's going to be very exciting with Goddard. They call him the gunslinger, Goddard the gunslinger, and now our first opportunity to see him in the gun. The handoff to Jarvie and Franklin, one of the workhorses in this backfield. He rattles off a good seven yards. They caught the Chippewas in the 4-3 under defense, and they're just going to run Franklin. And we understood coming into this game that they would probably run the ball a lot. You know, they got two fantastic running backs in Franklin and Jamari Bogan. And like we said, you got a, a freshman quarterback starting. You want to just, you know, get him into some sort of rhythm, heading the ball off, and probably let him take a couple of hits too because he's a pretty good runner with the ball in his hands also. Trips out to the left for Western Michigan. No scrimmage on second and three. Read option to Franklin over the middle. He's going to pick up the first down. That's exactly what we expected. A couple of inside runs with Franklin, who's just excellent in between the tackles. You know, let, let Bogan, um, I mean, let Goddard get his feet wet, get comfortable, get into a rhythm. Franklin now out in the pattern. Goddard attempting his first pass. No, he's going to tuck it and run it. Breaks free from a tackle along the left side. He'll cut up about seven, maybe six yards, seven yards on the play. Alex Briones with the stop for Central Michigan. It's a Central Michigan defense right now without one of their top players. It was a game-time decision. We're going to send it down to Quinn right now on the field for more on Joe Osman. Quinn? Yeah, Joe Osman uh, warmed up uh, really as a decoy, but he will not play tonight. That's gigantically significant. He leads the country with 10 sacks. He's a captain. He's an all-effort, all-the-time type of guy who plays with his hair on fire. Joe Osman will not play tonight. Yeah, thanks, Quinn. Mike Dane is going to start in his place, and that's significant when you talk about a freshman Des making his first career start yeah. in Goddard, and now all of a sudden you have the guy who has 10 sacks on the year leading the nation not playing in this game for the chips exactly you don't know how much of a factor it's going to be in this game but i do anticipate that western michigan is going to run the ball a lot tonight i don't i don't know if osman would have had a chance to be a factor as far as his sack sacks are concerned but you got a freshman running a freshman quarterback in goddard it seems like right now kevin johns is really comfortable just running the ball right at this chippewas defense franklin back in the backfield on a big third and two Eskridge in motion. Franklin breaks it up, but he's going to take it to the house. They just kept knocking on the door, knock, 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 until it opened up. Like I said, Kevin Johns is really comfortable with his line, his offensive line, and his running backs. They're doing a tremendous job up front, and they thought coming to this game, and you look at where they were running the ball, to the right side where Osman would have been. They're taking advantage of his departure, his, his absence, and a huge touchdown for Jarvie and Franklin. 47 yards for Franklin on that carry, his 53rd total touchdown, which is a new school record. He had been tied with Corey Davis. So he just continues to pile on the records. Josh Grant for the point after, splits the uprights, and just like that, the home team, the Western Michigan Broncos, break out on top. Seven to nothing after a five-play, 66-yard drive, all of it on the ground. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think, like I said, they're comfortable with that. And you look at Jarvin Franklin, he's played a lot of football here. He's a senior, he's a leader, part of the leadership console. We had a great meeting with him yesterday. and He's an impressive young man. Very impressive. And when he came into our meeting, I thought he was a GA just because of the way he, he, he carried himself. Very mature individual. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know this game means a lot to them. And it's really, really ironic to me how, you know, we're talking about, okay, this could be four in a row for your seniors against the Chippewas. And he's like, yeah, you know, this is great. But then we brought up the fact that you can send Central Michigan seniors out without <laughs> ever beating Western Michigan. Then he kind of perked up. I was like, I like that better. Yeah, that kind of motivates me. So well, off to a good start tonight. He has over 4,300 career rushing yards. And as we mentioned, 53 total touchdowns. Mac Offensive Player of the Year in his freshman year back in 2014 when he was also the freshman of the year, obviously. Right, yeah. Had so over 15 rushing, 1,500 rushing season. yards that year, yeah. Derek Mitchell kicking off now for Western Michigan. 
Back to receive. Jared Davis for the chips. Takes it over the 20, up on about the 25-yard line. That's where Central Michigan will scrimmage for the first time today. Well, let's see if Central Michigan can, uh, can answer that, that touchdown one of their own. Got Shane Morris coming out, the transfer from Michigan. He's a, uh, man, he, he has a cannon for an arm. He's a lefty. So I want to see how they're going to play him with, uh, with Tim Dow's defense. But he's a guy who's capable of making all the throws. I wonder how the weather's going to affect this game plan now for the Chippewas. Morris in the gun right away. The fake keeps it himself. He's going to get about two, three, four. Still using that power on his feet. Five yards. Counted off, so Morris, not really known for his legs, picking a good gain on first down. Yeah, that's something that we really don't see Morris do a lot of running the ball, a little zone read with uh, with Shane Morris. Maybe they're going to come out with a little wrinkle to try to catch uh, the Broncos' defense off balance. Good determination that time by Morris. Robert Spillane, really the leader on this Western Michigan defense, in to make the stop. But Morris is a big kid, man. He's six foot three, two ten, and I'm, I was down there on the field before the game, and man, he has great size. Completion that time to Corey Willis, just shy of the first down. It looks to be a third down and about one yard. And Corey Willis, for Central Michigan fans, used to seeing Willis in number eight. He's wearing number twenty-one tonight in honor of Derek Nash, who was a teammate of his. Lost his life to cancer back in 2015. Since that day, one player has been able to wear that number 21 jersey in every game. And tonight, Corey Willis, the senior, has that honor. They wanted to save it for Corey for a special night like tonight, a night against Western Michigan, a big robbery, which they knew would make a lot. And Ward is going to be stopped. Asante Brown comes crashing in from his linebacker spot on third and short. Stuffed in West, Western Michigan holds. Central's going to have to punt. Three and out for Central Michigan. Not, with the, not how they wanted to start the game. And this is a situation where the, the linemen were trying to pull. He actually ran into the back of his offensive lineman. They got to get out the way on that play. There's Darius Phillips back to receive this punt. 11 career returns for a touchdown for Darius Phillips. Yeah, I want to see if they're going to punt it to him. Uh, you know, he received the opening kickoff. But let's see if they're... Uh, going to punt it to him. Jack Sheldon, the Aussie punter, he puts his foot into it, but we have a delay of game. Play clock was winding down and couldn't get it off in time. If that was any indication before the whistle blew, they aren't going to punt to him. No, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Low line drives to the sideline. That's what it looks like. Our referee tonight is Amanda Sauer. There's no foul for delay of game. It is still fourth down. The officials were not in position to correctly officiate the play. Fourth down. You don't hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a very, very odd one right there. The officials were not in position. Tip your cap that they admitted they were not ready to go. Now they are. We'll just replay I'll give, it. I'll give, I'll give them credit for being honest, though. Penalty? Yeah. Now Sheldon puts his foot into it, a little low line driver. It's going to bounce. Will Phillips pick it up? He does pick it up at his own 16-yard line, going the other way. Now he reverses field, slips and falls before eventually falling at the 18-yard line. <laughs> Gary Jones yeah. with the stop for Central Michigan, but Phillips makes it interesting. 7-0 lead for Western Michigan. As Jarby and Franklin takes it to the house in this great rivalry. Rain coming down here at Kalamazoo, Waldo Stadium. It's supposed to be getting warmer as the night progresses, but a little rainier as well. Western Michigan already up 7 nothing over Central Michigan. Tim Lester was head coach at Western Michigan in his first season, taking over for P.J. Fleck, was a player here back in the late 90s, and now the head man. This game means a lot to him. It means a lot to him. Yes, sir. Jarvie and Franklin back. Flanking Reese Goddard, the freshman quarterback. Goddard now back to pass. Tucks it and runs and escapes the rush and picks up what he can, about one yard. Yeah, it seems like Goddard was looking in the middle of the field and he came off his first read. He didn't go to his second or third read and just tuck and ran. And that's kind of what you expect, though, from a freshman quarterback, his first start, even though he's used to this style of uh, offense. Franklin patiently waiting for his blocks. 
sheds a tackle, gets a first down and more, stays in bounds before they finally rule him out. About the 35 yard line, so pick up a 16 yards. And I got to say, I have to say that the benefit of having a Franklin back there or a Bogan back there at the running back position is that Kevin Johns, the OC, KJ, he can afford to try to throw the ball on first down and still come up if it's incomplete second down and 10 and know he can give the ball to one of those backs and they can pick up positive yardage, five, six, maybe 10 yards a crack. So that's the benefit of having such a, a lethal rushing attack, even when you have a freshman quarterback starting for the first time. Franklin again finding space, spins out of a would-be tackler, gains about three yards. You know, Chris, at this point, it seems like Western Michigan is just content with playing smash mouth football. Like they want to show Central Michigan, our guys are better than your guys, and we're just going to come out here and prove it. We're going to impose our will on you up front, and so far so good, because that's exactly what they've been doing. First time we've had a chance to see Jamari Bogan, number 32 in the game for Western Michigan. More of a shorter, stockier power back. The guy will put his head in there and get you a couple yards when you need it. Goddard back to pass, overthrows his intended receiver, Donnie Ernsberger, his tight end. First attempt, first incompletion of the game. Yeah, it was a well-designed play. Ernsberger was wide open. I think um, Reese got a little, a little happy, a little yeah, excited. Right yeah, a little excited. Right so he has to calm down a little bit. He'll be able to make that throw because I watched him earlier. Man, he he can uh, he can he can zip that thing. Bogan stays in the block. Goddard throws incomplete. Nice defensive play that time. He was trying to hit his receiver, Dwayne Eskridge, and Amari Coleman. Defending on the play, it'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, really good coverage by Coleman. Um, he read the route, broke on it, batted it down. It was man-to-man -man coverage. And you're going to see a lot of that from the Chippewas tonight. A lot of man-to-man. -man. They may have to go man-to-man -to, -man to stop the run now, because they may have to start dropping like eight in the box, the way Western's been running the ball on the Chippewas so far. Getting a little chippy out there. Derek Mitchell back to punt for Western Michigan. The oldest player in FBS, 30 years old, played 10 years of minor league baseball before coming back to college. Puts a good foot into it as well. He really did. I'm gonna let that one bounce. That's gonna be a great play for the Broncos. Inside the five. Darwin Kelly has to catch that ball. Yeah, he can't let that ball bounce and drop like that. Central Michigan takes back over, trailing 7-0 in this big rivalry, battling for the Cannon Trophy. Eight fifty-seven left in the first quarter here from Waldo Stadium. Western Michigan with a 7-0 lead over Central. Been a wild year for Western Michigan. Opening game at USC, they played very well, but they could see the wildfires there in Southern California from their hotel room. Then they had this crazy seven-overtime win against Buffalo. <laughs> that was where bananas. Donnie Ernstberger's <laughs> sister came out of the stands to give him a oh, hug. That like was the classic. Third overtime. <laughs> then you have this game here just a couple of weeks ago. Torrential rainfall. Walter, they had to postpone the game until Sunday. Akron upset them. And then, yep. of course, John Wasink, the starting quarterback, lost for six to eight weeks with a collarbone injury ten days ago against Eastern Michigan. Also an overtime game in which yep. they were able to win. It's been a crazy season for the Broncos. There's no doubt about that. Crazy weather continues They've tonight. weathered these storms, haven't they? they? Rain. That's exactly <laughs> right. They've weathered it. Three and one in conference, five and three overall. Got some rain tonight, but temperatures getting a little warmer, much to Quint Kesnick's joy on that one. Hand off over the middle. Nice little run that time by Jonathan Ward, starting tailback for the Chips. Send it down to Quinn, who's out there in the rain. Quinn? Uh, easy for you to say that it's getting warmer uh, down, down here, Chris. The temperatures are in the low 40s, and the rain has really picked up. And, and ball security for a guy like Shane Morris is going to be paramount. He's thrown 11 picks this season. His decision-making has been questionable at, at times, and he got a wet football to like, boot. Yeah, going double tights with uh, Jonathan Ward back there in the backfield with Robert Spillane with a fantastic tackle in the backfield for the loss. Yeah, Robert Spillane went on the blitz. He shot through the B-gap and made a great tackle for loss. He's, a, he's one of the team leaders, too. Guy was very vocal, the emotional guy. He calls the defenses. He's going to be big in the, in the game tonight if Central Michigan is going to keep the ball on the ground. And this is a big third day right here, deep in their own territory. See, Quint, Quint, Quint needs to understand, as long as the temperature, you know, stays warmer, then the precipitation won't turn into snow like it did when we were in Columbus last Saturday. It was the craziest <laughs> thing. Number 78 offense. Half the distance to the goal. Remains third 
Amanda Sauer, our referee on the night, giving us the bad news for the Chips. They're going to back up even more. Half the distance to the goal, it'll be third and ten. Not the start that the Chippewas wanted. They're going to have to come up with a good play, a big play now. This drive started off pretty promising, too, with a big run on the first down. Morris back to pass, survey the field. Tries to hit his man deep, but out of bounds. Mark Chapman was already out of bounds by the time the ball came to his way. Stephon Claiborne on the coverage, so the Chips will be forced to punt from deep in their own territory. Yeah, i tell you what, the Broncos were in the man-to-man -man coverage. They cover four, and uh, I, I think Shane was getting nervous, happy feet, staring in that end zone right there all that time, and they just threw it out of bounds. Two possessions now, two three and outs for Central Michigan. So Shane Morris and company have yet to find their sea legs in this on this wet, soggy night here on the field of Walton <laughs> Stadium. Jack <laughs> Shell is back to punt. And this time he had very little choice but to punt it to Darius Phillips. Let's see what Phillips can do. He takes it at his own 40. Can he get to the outside? No, he cannot. Fantastic defensive play that time by Central Michigan. You're not kidding, partner. That was a fantastic tackle in space against one of the best returners in the country. Daquan Jameson making the stop. 7-0. Broncos on top. Midway through the first quarter, the battle for the Cannon Trophy. Western Michigan with an early 7-0 lead over Central Michigan. And getting it done on the strength of their running backs. We thought they would at yes, the start sir. of the game, Dez, and they certainly are with Jarvie and Franklin. Yeah, with Jarvie and Franklin is third in the conference, averaging 80 yards per game, 4.4 average uh, per tote. And, you know, he's just a guy who bounces off the of tackles, really tough in between uh, the tackles. Good receiver out of the backfield, great in pass pro. And look at him right there trying to show a little bit of speed. For a guy who's 225, yeah. he moves pretty well. Well, here's the, the lightning to that thunder, if you will, or maybe it's the thunder to the lightning. Jamari Bogan, the number two back, who checks in at 5'7", but 192 pounds, and he's up there. We were in the weight room the other day. He's up there in terms of the squats and <laughs> the cleans and all the lifts. This guy is a strong dude. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And really good in short yard situations. Going to give uh, Franklin a spell this series. Let's see what he's able to do. Picked up a good four yards on first down. Staying ahead of the chains here. Yeah, West, Goddard. Western's looking at the defense, running the check with me right now, looking at the sideline for the call. Terrence Berger, the tight end in motion. Got a flag on the play. Odell Miller jumped off sides. He's a tight end, too. Old school offensive guys dream. You got double tights. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, they go with their 12 personnel yeah, now. They, they just want to pound the Chippewas, chip and chip, chip at, chip away at that defense. <laughs> Look, Odell, 6'3", 270. Are you kidding me? He's a tight end. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know Jamari Bogan likes a guy like that. You know that's right. In front of him and. Coaches couldn't stop raving about Donnie Ernsberger as well, the other tight end. He's a pass catcher, but he's also a great blocker. Lining up in the slot right now, in motion. Another flag on the play. False start, number 38, offense. Odell again. What are they doing to Odell? It seems like the, um, the Broncos linemen are pointing at the Chippewas as if they're barking out the calls or barking out the um, the snap count. That's that's two in a row, back to back for Odell. Now, now they were ahead of the chains. Now they're behind it quite a bit. It's second and 16. Odell Miller just went to the sideline to have a discussion with the coaching staff. Yeah, well, jumping off two two times in a row. That'll get it done. Exactly. Bogan fake handoff this time, and Goddard tries to hit Ernstberger, and a little too hot on that one. Yeah, high and hot, that one was coming in, and uh, like I said, I think Goddard's going to have to just settle down a little bit because uh, the two throws that he missed so far were both high, uh, high, high heaters, so to speak. That one might have gotten away from him. Again, we have had rain of the entire game, and it's still coming down at a pretty good clip deal with a wet football so third and 16 now for Western clearly not in their wheelhouse in terms of what they want to do offensively Goddard escapes the rush 
Thought about tucking it and running with it. Smartly just throws it out of bounds, though, and they'll live to the fight another day. Mike Dana with the pressure that time. Mike Dana filling in for Joe Osman on yes. that defensive end spot. And they're, uh, the Chippewas defensive coaches are very excited about Dana. Say he's coming to his own right now, but I think you hit it on the head when you said it was a smart play by Goddard because week in and week out, you see quarterbacks in situations just like this, and then they either try to tuck it and run it or take a sack. For him to throw the ball out of bounds was a very mature play for this freshman quarterback, and like you said, they live to see another down. Let's find out what the officials are discussing here. We do have a flag down on the turf. I bet you one of the linemen thought that Goddard was going to tuck it and run, so he headed upfield to, to get a block, and then Goddard decided to throw it out of bounds. So. And Lester encouraging his troops to be fourth and long, bringing on Derek Mitchell, the punter. You know, the thing about Mitchell, outside of his age, being the oldest player mm -hmm. in the FBS, is he's a left-footed punter, too, and so the ball can take an awkward or odd spin. Sometimes we'll see if Mark Chapman can handle it. He says stay away from it and it takes a also Central Michigan bounce checks back yeah. And they'll put it in play at about the 27 yard line So after an initial drive by Western Michigan to put points on the board both offenses have bogged down We got a good one here at Waldo Broncos leading 7 to nothing here in Kalamazoo. How about this one, Dez? Yes, sir. ABC on Saturday. Clemson, they got Kelly Bryant back, but they yep. got to go to Raleigh to take on NC State. And NC State, they had a pretty good defense. Now, they were exposed last week against Notre Dame, mm -hmm. but Notre Dame's a fantastic team. Loves to run the ball. And then you got Virginia Tech Miami, huh? Yeah, 3.30 for the first one. 8 o'clock for this one. Miami unbeaten. Virginia Tech just one loss. So both those teams in the ACC still alive for a potential playoff berth down the road. We have some outstanding games this Saturday. This Saturday's an unbelievable Saturday. This Saturday oh, yes, and the sir. next on the 11th, too. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Romello Ross now in the backfield for the chips. And Morris is going to go deep, and he's got a man. Can he stay in bounds? No. Out of bounds. Corey Willis, the intended receiver, just couldn't get that foot in, couldn't hold on to it as well. I'll tell you what, the Chippewas are catching uh, the Broncos in the cover four, and they tried to get it to 21. And he's to take a little bit off of it because he had a step or two on the defender. He gets keeping it in bounds. A little bit more bounds, that would have been a completion because he had him beat. Stephon Claiborne with the coverage for the Broncos, bringing up a second down and 10. Tomano Quilly now in the backfield. He takes the handoff. He'll squirt inside, pick up maybe two yards, maybe one. Quilly's a power back in this offense, 6'2, 239 pounds. And Robert Spillane right now is playing a, uh, just a really good game. Anytime they run the ball, he's around the ball, making tackles or getting in the mix. But the thing about the Chippewas, when they throw the ball on first down, it just sets them behind. The, they, they get behind the chains, and now they're third and long. Tony Polge in the backup quarterback, who also lines up sometimes as a receiver. And at the top of your screen is Morris back to pass over the middle and no one home. Western Michigan came with the blitz on that play, third and long. I can't blame Tim Douse. Douse said, listen, we're going to pressure. We're going to bring some pressure. You know, that's the type of defense that we like to play. And especially if you get them in third and long situations, he's going to dial up some exotic blitzes, and he did right there. Morris just one for four for four yards to start the game. And Morris has such a good arm that you don't want him sitting back there. You want the ball out of his hands as quick as possible, especially under these conditions. And if you're a Western Michigan fan, you want the ball in this man's hands as much as possible. Here, Darius Phillips again back to receive the punt. But it gets by him. That's a great punt that time by Jack Sheldon. That's an excellent punt right there. Low. Took a nice bounce for the Chippewas. Gary could away handle it. It's exactly. 61 yards and 61 net yards because you don't you keep it out of the hands of the best returner in the game. Exactly. Right now, that's 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 the ball game for the Chippewas. They got to keep the ball out of Darius' hands and make sure they play a field position game. Didn't Darius tell you something interesting? I loved hearing the conversation between you and he the other day as yeah. two punt returners when he said <laughs> in high school he used to watch it bounce first before he would pick it up and run with it. Exactly, which really really shocked me. I mean, I mean he did that. 
as a routine. Like, it's just not like, oh, you know, sometimes I would let it bounce and catch it. Other times I would catch it on the fly. Like, no, every time they punted the ball to this young man in high school, he would let it bounce and then catch it off the bounce. So what's working for him right now is he certainly has had a lot of success. Broncos back with it. Now first and 10 from the road, 11. Franklin. And this little stretch play right here uses his power to bounce off a tackle, gains about seven more yards. A lot of the success of this running game is due to the fact that they have a veteran, veteran offensive line. And Quint is going to have a little bit more on that because they've got some studs up front, Quint. Yes, they do. This is not your typical Mac offensive line, Chris. Chukuma Okora for their left tackle, 77, is one of the we'll top rated tackles. Here in a little bit. Chukuma Okora for is the man you're looking at right now, and that is a mountain. 6'6, 330 pound senior. Left tackle. Mel Kuyper Jr. has him number five on his list of draft eligible tackles. Is Franklin again on the outside, and he's got a lot of room to roam. Beyond the 35, out to the 37 yard line. They caught the Chippewas in the 4-3 over defense. And I tell you what, Franklin is just doing a really good job of picking and choosing his holes, his lanes. He almost got caught right in the back right there for a loss. Really good footwork. Switched the ball to his left hand. Got around the edge. Not a guy who's known for his speed. A power runner, but he knows how to get around the corner. Franklin's big day continues. Eight carries, 104 yards already. Has that long scamper for a touchdown. This Very time Goddard keeps running. it wide open that time to the tight end Ernstberger. Another first down. And what happened right there is the Chippewas, are, they came in with the run blitz and Goddard read it perfectly and threw the ball right on time finally to Ernstberger. Try to slow down that blitz. They're gonna come, the blitz is going to come from the left side. A little tempo here by Western Michigan. Franklin finding all kinds of room. He may go again. All the way down to the 10-yard line. Josh Cox finally ran him out of bounds, but another big run for Franklin. I think Greg Kobe, the defensive coordinator for the Chippewas, has decided that he needs to start to blitz, especially on first down, because they were getting such huge chunks. But the problem is, if your guys miss, it's going to be a big gainer, a chunk play for Western Michigan. That's exactly what happened. Oh, Mike Caliendo, 61 out front there, creating space for Franklin. In Western Michigan's offensive line, their tackles and their tight ends, they're doing just a fantastic job of picking up the blitz. They're recognizing where it's coming from, and they're stoning them at the line of scrimmage. Third back member of this backfield, Davon Tucker, it now design run by Goddard. He'll pick up maybe two yards on that one. It'll be second down and goal. Mitch Stanisak with the tackle. Yeah, Kevin Johns, the OC at this point, he just wants to keep it on the ground. And, uh, and get, get Reese into the mix a little bit. Let him run, take a couple of hits. I mean, you know, like I say, he's a guy who's he's built like a Baker Mayfield type of quarterback. He has that moxie. The coaches, his players, they all love him. They were all so excited for him to start this game tonight just to see how he would respond. Davon Tucker with the carrier on the left side. Breaks a tackle, breaks another, scores! Just a beautifully designed play, a power to the left. It seemed like they pulled the whole right side of their offensive line to the left. He had a convoy in front of him. Chris, Western Michigan right now is just imposing their will on Central Michigan. And it all starts at the line of scrimmage. Pulled the right guard, the right tackle. They're picking up blocks. And Bogey and Tucker did the rest. Josh Grant, the freshman, on to attempt the point after try. With Derek Mitchell on the hold. Grant splits the uprights, and just like that, still 2.26 left to go in the first quarter here. Western Michigan using the ground attack yeah. to just grind it out against this Chippewa team. And you know, Greg Colby, the defensive coordinator, has got to figure this out. Yeah, no, he has to. And you know, he's going up against the team that's ranked second in the conference in rushing offense, averaging 235 yards on the ground per game, about five yards per crack. Um, you know, so this is who they are, this is what they do. And coming to this game, I mean, 
Greg Kobe knew what he was up against. This, this defensive line and the linebackers, they're going to have to respond a little um, a little better moving forward. But oh, this can get ugly quick. Let's take a look at Tucker's eight-yard touchdown run on that last play. You can see the offensive line, as you mentioned it, to Kumar Kaur for Big old number 77 here on the left side of your screen. Quint, what do you got? Yeah, he's not your typical Mac offensive lineman. There's 15 NFL scouts and two GMs. The New York Jets and Pittsburgh Steelers are here tonight to watch him play. He's a, you know, a top-rated tackle in the country, top three. He's got great length, 84-inch wingspan. He's a former soccer player from Nigeria with great footwork. He's the star of this game in their eyes. Derek Mitchell puts his foot into it. And Gerard Davis is going to receive it at his own six-yard line for the chips. Brings it out to the 26, and that's where Central Michigan will try and get something going offensively. It hasn't been a whole lot of fun for Shane Morris and company so far. No, it hasn't. Not at all. When Chooks, the offensive lineman that um, Quinn was talking about, really, really good for footwork because he used to be a soccer player. Didn't start playing football until like he got to high school. Didn't even really understand the sport. Picked it up quickly. Started off as a guard. Grew a couple of inches his junior year. Started playing tackle. And now he has a uh, half of the scouts in the NFL here to see him play tonight. Jonathan Ward on the swing pass has some room, and he may go to the distance, too. Into Western Michigan territory, finally forced out of bounds by Stephon Claiborne at the 32-yard line. Jonathan Ward is an exciting runner. He's special with the ball in his hands. He's another guy. They're going to move all around the field tonight. He's listed as a running back, but they put, they put him in the slot. They're lining him out wide, throw the ball to him. He's just a guy who he has to get... I would say 18 to 21 touches tonight. 96 carries coming in, 34 receptions, so they'll use them in a variety of ways. Here, carrying the football, gets tripped up, but still falls forward for a gain of five yards. Now he has a knack of finding the crease, and he, you know, he's very explosive. Just a really shifty runner with the ball in his hands. And Central will try and go at tempo. You can see they're picking up the pace right now. Morris back to pass. Looking for his receiver in the end zone. Broken up. Nice play by Darius Phillips that time in coverage. He was looking for Mark Chapman. Couldn't connect. You know, they were in cover two on that play. And Shane looked to his left and ended up coming to his right late. And he didn't see the cornerback on that side who dropped Darius, Darius Phillips, who dropped back in coverage. Would have been interception number 12 on the season for Shane Morris if Phillips could have grabbed it. Third down and five now for Central Michigan. They've got something going for the first time tonight. Can they keep it going? Ward makes the catch and picks up the first down. Oh, he's close, but he didn't get there, I don't think. He might be a yard short. It looks like he's going to be short. Now a decision time for Central Michigan. Already trailing 14 yeah. to nothing in this game, Des. I think you got to go for the points. Go for the field goal. Let's see. They're going to go for the touchdown. I mean, go for the first down or go for the field goal. Looks like uh, Shane is still on the field. Mm -hmm. They're going to go for the... See if they can get the first down or a touchdown. And they're bringing they're a fullback, it. too. Double tights and a fullback. Two fullbacks. Handing it off to Ward. He spins out of it. He's going to be close. we got a flag on the play, too. we got a host of flags. And, and Western Michigan is saying it's their ball that Ward fumbled. Spillane is walking off the field with the ball in his hand. The officials are all there to sort it out. Maybe a word or two being spoken as well. These guys are <laughs> neighbors. It doesn't mean they're friendly neighbors, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Spillane did come out of there with the football. Flags came in all over the place, though, to your point. Spillane is saying, let's go. Let's go to the sideline. That's our ball. The officials led by our referee, Amanda Sauer, now talking it over. It was such a pile of humanity in there. You couldn't see what took place, what happened. It looked like Ward had the first down for a minute. Both our head coaches, Tim Lester, John Bonamigo. Looking on intently, and Bonamigo has to think, boy, we're finally getting a little, little something going offensively, and now this. Personal foul, face mask, number eight on the defense. Oh, wow. 
That's big for Central Michigan. Caleb Bailey. Awesome. Bailey called for the personal foul. So whether it was a fumble, whether they picked up the first down or not, it's irrelevant after that call. Yeah, that's a big play. This drive continues for the Chippewas. It's a huge penalty for Western Michigan. Let's see if we can see it in here. I don't see anything right see there. In that show. No. There it is, right, right there. there. Bailey yes, has right hand in. Yes, he did. Good call. Really good call. Good catch by the officials. First and 10 from the 11-yard line for Shane Morris in Central Michigan. Kamahano, Quilly, the back. Takes the handoff. That's Romello Ross. The fake to Ross, and Morris keeps it inside the five-yard line. Takes a shot after he steps out of bounds. Officials keep the flags in their pockets in that one. Bailey with the tackle. But a nice game by Morris and a nice fake. Yeah, that was one of those wrinkles, too, because you just don't see Shane Morris carry the ball that often. But, you know, if they're going to come up there and try to be stout on the defensive line and, and take the running back, then Shane's going to pull it and keep it. So really good play. Good play call by the offense. Something we did not expect to see, especially in this heated rivalry. Jonathan Ward back in the eye. Second down and 10. Morris can't hit his receiver that time. Tyler Conklin, that's the first time we've called his name in this game. Yeah, he's, we, we, we think he's going to be a big factor at some point in this game. I mean, he's uh, such a special player, listed as a tight end, but he plays all over the field for the offense. So versatile. He was on the field earlier before the game with his shirt off. All tatted up, hair in the ponytail, just looking the part. Shirt off. <laughs> yeah, just, just 38 sure. degrees and raining yeah. out. Just didn't care. No, not at all. Big third down here for Central Michigan. Morris is going to keep and score. Another zone replay where Morris kept the ball. So now Tim Douse, the defensive coordinator for Western Michigan, understands, hey, 11 may carry that thing, guys. We have to be aware of that. Big Just drive for Shane Morris. The great fake that time in Central Michigan. Boy, did they need that in the final minute of this first quarter. Yes, they did. Really good play call. Like an added wrinkle now to uh, Central's offense with Shane carrying the ball. Michael Armstrong with the PAT, and just like that, Central Michigan right back in this one. A minute left to go in the first quarter of Waldo, and they were down 14 to nothing, and Western was running all over them. Yeah. They took the ball in their own territory and said, we're going to try a few new things, and they incorporated Shane Morris into the running game, which is something we haven't seen a whole lot this year, but it certainly worked on that drive. Exactly, and, and Jonathan Ward, I mean, he started off, he's the dynamic player on the offense. We talked about Terry Conklin, the tight end, who... Uh, as a tight end, I mean, he's a matchup nightmare for safeties and linebackers, and I'm sure they're going to get the ball into his hands at some point tonight. But Jonathan Ward is the guy who's so dynamic. He's a special player. He's fast. He plays with a physicality, and they love his approach. So he's the one who actually got that drive started. But those zone replays now with Shane Morris keeping the ball, that really hurt the Broncos' defense. Well, the ESPN app is a fan's best friend. You stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live, and there are a ton of them. So you're going to want to have this app. You can take it anywhere you go. Yeah. And every game is right there in the palm of your hand. I tell you what, I love this app. I got off the plane last week, and, you know, we do this thing where we, we pick super dogs, right? And yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in the, um, uh, in the airport waiting for my luggage to come off the carousel. I pull out my phone. I'm watching the end of the Houston versus USF game. And I'm just cheering like I'm a, a Houston alum. I mean, because <laughs> I picked them as my super dog. And not only did they cover, they won the game. I cannot explain my excitement. But I was able to watch that because of that app. So I absolutely love that. I actually sent the, uh, a picture of that on uh, Instagram. I'm sure everybody at the airport seeing you smiling and laughing. Oh, yeah. Said, yeah. That's just Des being Des. I've yeah. <laughs> seen that all before. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Donnie Ernstberger, the tight end with the return of that kick. So Western Michigan takes right back over at their own 27-yard line. 52 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Jamari Bogan now in the backfield with freshman Reese Goddard taking the snap. Ernstberger in motion. 
Bogan with the carry. Still more room for Western Michigan running backs. Bogan taking it all the way out to the 46, a gain of 19. Western Michigan running the stretch play to the right side and just getting a hat on the hat. And Bogan just can find a crease. As soon as he sees a crease, he hits a very explosive runner. They usually use him normally in short yard situations, but they're going to spell Franklin with Bogan tonight. A couple of yards that time for Bogan before Mitch Stanisek is there for the stop. See Mike Dana's trying to get in on the action too. You know, he's replacing Joe Osman, who's not playing tonight because of an injury. He leads the uh, nation in sacks. But 57, Mike Dana. I think he's been a solid game. They, they, they're coming at him, though. They keep running to the right side. They keep coming at 57 and that, and the guys over there. So he's going to have to step it up and uh, get a little more stout. First quarter in the books. Western Michigan jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead before Central Michigan was able to come back and make a game of it as you see the coaching staff right there and John Bonamigo exhorting his troops. Broncos getting it done on the ground with all of their tailbacks contributing before Central Michigan got it done on the ground as well with Shane Morris. 14-7, Broncos on top. Beginning of the second quarter here in Kalamazoo, Waldo Stadium, home of the Western Michigan Broncos. Bronx on top of the Central Michigan Chippewas, 14-7. They continue to move the football on the ground now, second down and eight. Jarvin Franklin is already off to a fantastic start. His 20th career 100-yard game through one quarter. You know, this, means, this game means a lot to him, too, as a senior. He wants to go out with um, never, never losing the game against the Chippewas, but also send their seniors out with never winning a game against the Broncos. That meant a lot to him. Goddard keeping it along the right side. He's going to pick up close to a first down before Mike Dana tracks him down. Looks like he might be... Uh, he got the first down. Officials moving the chains. No, he did not. Third down. My mistake. Third inches. He looked very close. I'm surprised they didn't measure it, but... Um you know, Goddard is, uh, is a guy who can run the ball pretty well, too. You know, he's really comfortable in this offense because he ran an offense similar to this in high school. Moving the pile forward. Look at that offensive line. Look at big old 77 there pushing it forward. That's going to be enough for a first down. Now you can move the chains. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Chuk was about 10 yards downfield moving his man. He's, he's uh, just impressive, impressive left tackle, impressive football player to watch. Look at this push right here. Whoever lines up in front of him is in for a long, wet, cold night. Goddard now rolls back, looking to pass with a shoulder fake. That one's going to be overthrown and picked. Sean Bunny with the interception at his own five, and he takes it the other way. The Chippewas was in the zone. They were in the zone coverage. It was a double move, and Goddard pumped, and then he just let it fly. And he and the receiver, they just weren't on the same page at, at that point. Him and Eskridge. You're going to see him pump. It's a double move. And then Anton Curtis was out Curtis, there. Curtis, yeah, Curtis looked up for the ball. It was Curtis, not Eskridge. He looked up and uh, stopped running. And you can't do that on a double move. You still got to run, you know, until you see the ball and run through the ball. Made it an easy interception for Mark Chapman. Very easy. Both these teams very adept at turning the other team over, and that's been part of their formula for success all year long. Central now takes over with a little bit of momentum. I mean, interception for Sean Bunting, the other number three. Not Chapman, Bunting. That pass from Morris to Corey Willis falls incomplete. And Des, you mentioned this before. Central Michigan throws a lot on first down, and they get behind the chains often. And this, this is the case right here. Second down and 10 now. Yeah, that really hurts them because uh, the, the play calling, it, it really, as an offensive coordinator, you're behind the chains, and especially when you're playing from behind, you don't want to take too many risks. But Shane Morris, I mean, you have a guy like that at the quarterback position. That's what they do. That's who they are. They, they want to throw the ball. Design quarterback run here on the draw, and he's going to get close to the first down. He's going to fall a little bit shy. Bring up a third and three. Stephen Clark on the stop. And Chris, that's another play you don't see a lot. Quarterback draw with uh, with Shane Morris. It seems like they're um, 
they figure they want to run Shane tonight. You know, I think the defense wasn't prepared for 11 to carry the ball a lot tonight. So they're running Shane. And some situations to catch the Broncos defense off guard, quite frankly. Big third and three here for Central Michigan. Jonathan Ward flanking Shane Morris in the backfield. Morris rolling the pocket out. Can't hit his receiver, though. Mark Chapman, the intended receiver, and it falls incomplete, bringing up a fourth down. Tell you what, you got to give a lot of credit to the, the Broncos' defense because as, as Shane rolled to his left, the right side of that defense, they rolled out, and they really clouded his vision. He wanted to throw the ball early, but there were guys in his face, and he didn't have a clear throwing lane. So then he had to reset, and at that point, the ball came out short. So really a lot of credit to the Broncos' defensive line. They didn't get the sack, but they made sure he couldn't throw the ball out to the flat. Jack Sheldon back to punt for the Chippewas. Darius Phillips back to receive it for Western Michigan. Continue to kick to him. Phillips is going to get a chance here with the fair catch, though, and that's where Western Michigan will put the ball in play at their own 29-yard line. Broncos in the battle for the Cannon Trophy with a seven-point lead over the Chippewas. Early second quarter, Broncos leading the Chippewas 14-7, and they're doing a des on the strength of their running game. They average 235 yards a game. They already have 195. I know, and this day, well on their way to rushing over 400 yards. If this stays uh, the way it's going right now, if they stay the course, and it's it's not just one running back, too. You have Bogan, you have Franklin, you got Tucker. Each guy's contributing, and like you said, they're the second, uh, they're second in the conference in rushing offense, and they're showing why tonight. On that play, bowling his way is Jarvey and Franklin picking up a couple of yards. Quinn, you're down there on the field with more. What do you got? Well, Goddard comes over to the sideline and talks to Tim Lester, first-year head coach, after throwing his first pick. And, and Lester's been there, done that. He lost his first start as a Bronco. But I, I think Coach Lester's just got to stay patient with the game plan. He's got a great sense of identity, good offensive line, young receivers, experienced running backs, and a tough defense. Keep running the ball. And they do on this play as well. Franklin bounces off a tackler, still in the backfield, though, just puts his head down and tries to get back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Dana with a nice play that time in penetration. Yeah, I agree with uh, Quint. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep it on the ground. They try to go, uh, try to get a little greedy in that last possession, and that's why uh, the Chippewas walked with their interception. But Golden Temple over here on the third and seven. Yeah, well, KJ, he likes to try to control the, the game with tempo. He wants exactly. to dictate to the defense with tempo. And when he wants to run tempo, when he wants to slow it down, and um, seems like it caught up with him on that caught play up right on there. That one. Mike Data and Nate Brisson fast with the sack. And Central coming up on defense, forcing a punt. And Central, defensively, they want to get Western Michigan into huge down the distance situations, second and long, third and long situations, because that's when they can pin their ears, ears back and attack this freshman quarterback, Reese Goddard. Mark Chapman, a good look at him, returning this punt for Central Michigan. Derek Mitchell back to put his foot into it, and he does. Chapman back to receive it at his own 33, lets it go. That was a bad decision by Chapman. He should have caught that there at least a fair catch, you know. Yeah, it should have been a fair catch on that play. And you see he's kind of disappointed with himself because he, he knows I should have caught that ball. 58-yard punt that time by Derek Mitchell. Both these punters have been outstanding in this game in terms of flipping the field and forcing the opposition to go a long way, which is what Central Michigan is going to have to do on this drive. Let's see if Central Michigan is going to come with uh, some more wrinkles offensively. I mean, we've seen Shane Morris run the ball in this first half more than I've seen him run this, the whole season. Morris fumbled the football. Oh, the Central might have gotten a break on that one. That ball was rolling around. It looks like Romello Ross might have been able to fall on top of it. Yeah, I think they got lucky on that play. There's another zone read. And at the mesh point, he didn't know if he wanted to keep it in there, if he wanted to take it out, if he wanted to pull it. And um, I'm just surprised that doesn't happen more often. Especially really. with a wet ball out there. It's like a grease pig. <laughs> exactly. On a night like tonight. Exactly. Fortunate uh, were the Chippewas after that exchange, but they do lose six yards, bringing up a second and long. 
Morris that time with the double move, and that didn't work out for the chips. Yeah, he was throwing it to, to Conklin down the right side, and they just weren't on the same page. He threw it deep. Conklin pulled up short, and then they're looking at each other like, bro, what were you thinking, bro? Is that me? Or no, it's you. It's usually the receiver's fault, right, Des? Without a doubt. <laughs> Without it's a doubt. It's never the quarterback's fault. No, never the quarterback's fault. But does fault. the receiver admit that it's his fault? So at least until you get in the film room later on that what, week, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. I saw Conklin earlier. You know, he was all tatted up and shirt off and ponytail. So Shane may be saying, it was me, bro. It was me. My fault. <laughs> Ramella Ross on the carry on third and long. Draw play right there. Drake Spears with the tackle. And Central just trying to get out from the shadow of their own goalpost. They'll be punting from inside their own territory deep. Under 10 minutes left to go here in the second quarter. And Des, we've sort of we had that one drive by Central where they came right down the field and scored a couple of big plays. Western used a couple of big running plays to score. But we've had a lot of offenses, these, both these offenses, bogged down a little bit. And on the big drive that Central had, don't forget, they used Jonathan Ward a lot. And the last drive, he, he was barely utilized. He didn't touch the ball. He wasn't even close to touching the ball in the last drive. And they, he's a guy, not only can he, you know, Run the ball from the backfield, but they need to put him in the slot, too, as a receiver. Darius Phillips, no opportunity to return that punt, but Western will take over when we come back. 14-7 lead for the Bronx. Broncos leading the Chippewas 14-7. This is not a view of the area just outside of Waldo Stadium here in Kalamazoo, <laughs> Michigan. That is Nassau, no, Bahamas, where it is a gorgeous day. And we show you this because the Bahamas Bowl is a tie into both the MAC and Conference USA. And the, these two teams both have been to the Bahamas Bowl, Western Michigan and Central Michigan. Remember this game a couple of years ago? Central yeah. Michigan and Western Kentucky. Central Michigan and Cooper Rush came way back from behind in this game. Final play of regulation. They score one of the craziest touchdowns you'll ever see. Look at that. Unbelievable. Lateral. Look at this. <laughs> Oh my God. And they score. Davis takes it in. He hits the pylon. Now, do they kick the extra point to send it into overtime? No, they go no. for two to win it. And they oh. can't quite get it done. Oh, man. That game was phenomenal. You got to love the decision, though. And you got to love Shout out to our supporters and VIP partners of the Bahamas Bowl taking in our game at a watch party down at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium in Nassau. Hey, how nice. about a couple what of all expense paid tickets for Des and I to come down to the Bahamas, huh? Come on, people. Come on. Help run out <laughs> on that, that one. Exactly. <laughs> Devon Tucker that time with the run. Bahamas Bowl. Looking forward to another great game down there this time around. And hopefully they'll have a little bit better weather than we're having right now. I'm guessing they probably will. It's no raining. doubt about that. 45 degrees here. Devon Tucker back in the backfield again after that eight-yard carry on first down. Tucker again with the carry. Finds room along the left side. It's going to be another first down for Western Michigan before Malik Fountain makes the stop. I tell you what, um, Western Michigan is going with their power game right there, but um, t Josh Cox, the safety for Central Michigan, he's going to uh, have to come down and be a little more active in the running game. He, uh, he came down on that play. They're going to have to put eight in the box because oh, now they're starting to go tempo again. Now Western's going a little tempo, a little check with me. They're still going to check with me. At this point, it's almost like it's not an RP. It was like, do we want to run to the left or do we want to run to the right? <laughs> Tucker now to Goddard's left. This time they'll go Eskridge on the end around, and he's got some space. Gain of about seven yards on first down. And I'm going to tell you, what, what made that play work, what made that play go was number 22, Davon Tucker. He came up with a big block on Mike Dana right there. So Eskridge could turn the corner. Eskridge wouldn't have got that corner without that block. Really good block by Tucker on Dana. Tucker now lining up behind Goddard in the shotgun. A little pistol formation here. And that's the thing about these running backs too, man. They're, they're, you know, they're just not good runners with the ball in their hands. They're, they're excellent blockers. They're unselfish. They're, they're selfless. Tucker stretches Look it to the outside. Move. Bounces it for a first down. Man. You had three running backs like that on your roster. I mean, why would you throw the ball? Especially with the elements that we're dealing with tonight. And your offensive line right now is imposing their will. 
And backs are relatively fresh. Yeah. I mean, Jarvin Franklin coming back in the game, he has over 140 yards rushing in this game, but he hasn't been used a whole lot here over the last couple of drives because Tim Lester and Kevin Johns have been able to rotate other backs in. You know, he talked about that, too. He said as a freshman, you know, he carried the load, had over 1,500 yards. He was freshman of the year, player, offensive player of the year and all that. But he was really beat up because he carries such a load. He was happy to get the other running backs uh, on the roster, like a Bogan and now Tucker, guys who can give him a spell, even Bellamy, who isn't playing tonight, those guys, because it keeps them fresh, and then they get stronger as the year grows older. Donnie Ernstberger, the tight end on the receiving end of that play from Goddard. Second down and four. Franklin, looking for a crease, can't find much, still gets a couple of yards out of it. Darwin Kelly on the stop. And Darwin Kelly and a host of tacklers just pretty much <laughs> caught Franklin because Franklin is a guy who, when, he's, when he gets tackled, he falls forward. And normally the defender is on his back. And he's just a guy so powerful at 225 pounds out of Illinois. He's played a lot of football here at Western Michigan. His teammates respect him. Over 4,400 career yards and counting in this game because he's having a huge game tonight. Third and three for the Broncos. Goddard's going to keep it himself. Stretching for the first down. He didn't get it. He was fighting for it, though. <laughs> he was fighting for it. Seems like Michael was, Oliver in on the stop. He was trying to run over there behind Franklin, but it was such a, a mass of humanity over there that he tried to cut it up and didn't get the first down. Nice play by Oliver. Getting penetration, breaking that play up. So Western's going to go for it here at fourth and one from their own 33. Maybe a 50-yard field goal from that spot. And Tim Lester says, let's talk time about this for a bit. This is the first 30-second timeout of the half. As Lester and company talk about it. You know, it's interesting. Josh Grant is freshman freshman kicker for Western yeah. Michigan. Mm -hmm. Tim Lester says he's got a strong leg. It's right. almost the intermediate kick that he's more worried about than the longer ones. I mean, Josh Grant is 11 for 17 on the year, but he has hit a 49-yard field goal, so he's got a cannon for a leg. It's just where right. you can get it straight. Yeah, we got to get that accuracy thing down. Once we get that down, then he'll be okay. 14 to 7 the lead right now for Western Michigan, facing a fourth and one from the 33-yard line of the chips. We'll be back with more. Molly McGrath and Trevor Maddich here at the half. We're going to break down all the big Week 10 matchups, and we're going to get inside this guy's head in the mind of Maddich. Dan, we'll show you how Oklahoma State quarterback Mason Rudolph gets inside defense's heads. Now, I've got to say that, Desmond, if you guys do go to the Bahamas Bowl, <laughs> will Connor prepare with a spray tan or the tanning boot? <laughs> <laughs> I need something. I tell you what, I want to need a lot of 50, SPF 50 if I go down there right now. Fourth and one for Western Michigan. Looking forward to seeing you guys at the half. Quinn, what do you got for us? Well, I think the weather conditions dictate that they're going to go for this on fourth down. And Coach Lester loves his right guard, Luke Jeriga, and his center, John Kenoy. A core for is the hype guy, but look for them to run right. And yeah, we'll see if they do that with Franklin now in the backfield. Franklin keeps it. He's got the first down and more. Falls forward for an extra three yards, and Western Michigan keeps the drive going. Look at Quint Nostradamus right on the down money. there. Exactly. Right behind Jurga and Kenoy. Yes, sir. Oh, Max Just Center. Like Quint said. And when you got Franklin in the backfield, why wouldn't you go for it on fourth and one? Come on. This drive continues for Reese Goddard. And they hadn't relied very much on him throwing the football all game long. They've been able to run it. No, they really haven't. Franklin again. Pops that one into the line. Gets about four yards before Josh Cox is able to bring him down. They keep catching the Chippewas in this 4-3 under. They run the zone read, and he's just giving it. Giving it to uh, Franklin each time, each and every time. I like to see Goddard carry the ball a little bit. I mean, he's not a guy who's going to go out there and make you miss in space, but he's a tough, gritty kid. To your point, though, why? If, yeah. if you're going to get at least four yards on every one of these zone reads, if you hand it off? I want to see the Chippewas make him keep it. The defensive end needs to come crashing down on Franklin, so Goddard, Goddard would have to keep it. The handoff again. 
Franklin bouncing it outside, but not a whole lot of room. Gains a couple of yards before DeAndre Dill brings him down. This will bring up yet another third down. Third and about four for the Broncos. Time winding down in this first half. Just over four minutes left to go. You got the Broncos just chipping, chipping away at the Chippewas with this running game. I tell you what, that, that interception, though, that got it through earlier, was um, that was pretty big. But if they're able to score right now and go up two scores, because it seems like they're outplaying Central Michigan, but they're still only up one score. And I think that, that interception was big. Mark Boga now in the backfield. Takes the hand off from Goddard, looks to the right side, has a wide open hole inside the 10, the 5, down to the goal line, out of bounds at the 1. Oh, wow. I mean, that was just a misdirection power play. Brought the receiver across the formation, just froze the linebackers for a second, and then pulled Chooks. Not even touched. It, it, yeah, it pulled Chooks. Mike and Caliendo, Caliendo out front. Yeah. For a nice power play. Cox wasn't even touched until Cox pushed him out of bounds at the two. First and goal now for the Broncos with Bogan again. Taking the handoff, walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Western Michigan. They extend their lead. It's just a matter of them uh, imposing their will up front now. They're, they're winning the battle in the trenches. And when you can control the line of scrimmage, it makes the play calling for KJ, the offensive coordinator, so, so much easier. And that's exactly what they're doing. Man, Central Michigan, they're going to have to try to answer the bell before halftime. And at halftime, they need to go in there and try to figure something out defensively. Josh Grant in, a, in to attempt the PAT. And all three of these top running backs, Franklin, Tucker, and now Bogan, each finding pay dirt. Twenty-one to seven, the score in this rivalry game. The Cannon Trophy up for grabs, and so far it's been all Broncos on the ground. What can Central Michigan do to respond? They've got 3:05 left in this first half to find out. This weekend is massive in college football. Massive as we look at a rainy night here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. ABC, Clemson, and NC State. NC State still controls their own destiny in that side of the ACC. That'll be a 3.30. And then two teams still alive in the playoff, undefeated Miami and Virginia Tech with just one loss at 8 o'clock on ABC. Don't forget, you can see both those games streaming live on the ESPN app as well. Let's good look at Derek Mitchell right there. Oldest player in FBS at 30 years of age. Played minor league baseball. 240 career hitter at 88 home runs in 10 years. Yeah, you know there's a storyline behind it when you go to the player meetings and the punter is in the player meeting. and uh, Part of the uh, leadership council. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, he's 30 years old, so he has a little bit of wisdom. <laughs> David Terry on the receiving end of that. Mitchell kick, and he brings it out to his own 20-yard line. That's where Central Michigan will scrimmage. Two minutes and 57 seconds left in this first half. He was almost tackled by his own guy, Lonzo McCoy, on that play. He had to avoid him, number one. There's Mitchell in the minor league days, 10 years, playing in the minors. I wonder if Quinn has anything more on Derek Mitchell and his relationship with the coaches. Quinn, what do you got? He's, uh, he's married, as you said, 30 years old. He goes home after practice and mows his lawn. He has the same mortgage <laughs> broker as the head coach. <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing most college coaches don't share the, the same mortgage broker with their punters. So it's a very interesting dynamic with his coaching staff, that's for sure. And Tim Lester, not that much older than Derek Mitchell. It's Jonathan Ward with the carry that time for Central Michigan, bringing up second down and seven. And he's the guy I really think they need to get the ball into his hands. I mean, Jonathan Ward is a special player. He's explosive. He's dynamic. They can run him on jet sweeps. They can run him as a, a running back. Morris looking to throw. Gets tripped up out of the pocket. That would almost seem like it was unintentional, or at least at the, the very least, number 58 was Antonio Balboni. And I'm not sure he even meant to trip him up. I don't think he did either, but I tell you what, it's a good thing that he did because they had a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Ward and Spillane. And um, Robert Spillane, was trying to catch, trying to check Ward out there in the flat. He was going to run a, a wheel route. He had everything he wanted until he was tripped to the ground. So now an interesting situation here. 
Under two minutes left to go. A third and long for Central Michigan from their own 17. Tony Poljan, a backup quarterback, who also plays some receivers in the slot now. Morris back to throw. He's going to go deep, trying to find his receiver back shoulder, and it's broken up that time. Sam Beal broke it up, intended for Tyler Conklin. They still are having a hard time getting Conklin the ball. Yeah, Western Michigan brought pressure, and that time Shane had to get the ball out of his hands a little quicker, and the ball came short. That was really a bad back shoulder throw. I mean, at that point, Conklin pretty much had to play defensive back just yeah. to prevent the interception. Beal was calling for a flag, didn't he? <laughs> He's probably right. <laughs> he should have got a flag. Offensive pass interference on that play. Six of Central Michigan's seven possessions have ended up in three and outs. Yeah. Just had that one scoring drive where they had a couple of big plays. Other than that, Western's really been able to control this game, and now they'll get it back. As the ball goes out of bounds, for fielded at the 44-yard line. Western Michigan will have an opportunity maybe to put some more points on the board in the final minute 29 of the first half. Well, fresh off their remarkable come from behind win against Penn State. Ohio State now a little bit of danger game here going on the road to take on Iowa Saturday 3.30 on ESPN and on the Watch ESPN app. Got to watch out for Anytime you go on the road in conference play, yeah, coming you, off a big win. I, the Hawkeyes are a different team at home, man. They're a really different team. They have a pretty good running back who I think is underrated. Akron Wadley. Yeah, you like Wadley. I like him a lot. Look at what Ohio State has coming up here at mm -hmm. Iowa. Michigan State suffered mm -hmm. a bad, uh, you know, a tough loss tough for loss them. Tough loss Northwestern. Triple overtime exactly. in Northwestern last week. It ain't going to be easy. No. No question about it. Yep. They have a target on their back right now. Big target on their back. Jarvie and Franklin back in for Western Michigan. He's had a huge first half, as have all the Broncos on the ground. I tell you what, I was really impressed with the way they came back last week against Penn State because, man, JT Beard, I think that may have been the best game I've ever seen him play in an Ohio State uniform. Dwayne Eskridge was the intended receiver. Got it a little off on that play. Eskridge was open. Yeah, but the thing that they uh, they can afford to go, uh, you know, throw an incomplete pass on first and ten because they're they're running the ball so effectively that the offensive coordinator KJ he knows all he needs to do is turn around and hand it off to one of those running backs and they can get positive yards on just about any running play they dial up. Two passing plays in a row though. Goddard flushed out of the pocket now. Rolling and throws a pass, dangerous pass, but gets it into the hands of his receiver. They're going to losing yards on the play, though. Josh Cox coming up to make a nice play defensively. Mike Dane as well, forcing Goddard out of the pocket. Yeah, that play was um, was, was was destined to fail from the word go. Doomed, if Doomed. you will. Yeah, it was right there. They got pressured, and they read the, the screen, and they start to run towards the screen, and that was a dangerous pass, like you said. He should just threw it, to the, threw it at the running back's feet, threw it at Franklin's feet. Josh Cox, the senior veteran out of Warren, Michigan. Nine career interceptions tracking down Franklin on that play, forcing a third and long here as the clock winding down. 42, 41 seconds left to go in the first half. That's what Western Michigan opts to do here on third and 11. About as safe a play as you can imagine. Handing it off to Jarvie and Franklin. Mitch Stanisek there with the stop. It's going to bring up fourth down, and Central's going to call a timeout here, maybe hoping to do something in the final 30 seconds. I don't blame them. Why not? Anything can happen in 30 seconds. So. Just something where you go all out, try and block the punt, too. Why not? I think so. The way these punters have been punting, I, I would go after it, but they get it off pretty quick. They do get the punts off pretty quick. John Bonamigo, the head coach at Central Michigan, of course, years as a special teams coach, assistant in the NFL, so that's his bag. Yeah. I think if, um, you know, if you notice something up front that you can take advantage of, I think this is the moment to try to exploit it and go after this punt. Derek Mitchell will put toe to leather. Mark Chapman back to receive the kick for Central Michigan, standing at his own 23. Final 30 seconds of the first half. Mitchell gets off another good kick. This one's returnable, though, for Chapman. Stop dead in his tracks, though, at his own 16-yard line. Nice play that time by Wyatt Pfeiffer. Special teams for the Broncos.
There you can see Chapman looking for some room. Couldn't find anything. Yeah, good job of uh, securing the catch. Catching the ball from a left-footed punter in the rain. Not the easiest thing to do. Trust me on that one. So final 20 seconds of the first half. Central Michigan in their own deep in their own territory. Let's see what Shane Morris and company opts to do. Morris is going to pass. Quick pass out into the flat. Drop that time by Tony Polgen. That was all on Polgen right there. Yeah. And that ball was right in his hands. Uh, you know, it's a wet ball, but... Quarterback Shane. sometimes receiver. Yeah, yeah. It's a big kid, too. He's a big old kid. 6'7", 225 pounds from Lansing, Michigan. Actually had offers to play tight end mm -hmm. at, at many other D1 schools. Yep. Had an opportunity to come here and not only be a pass catcher, but maybe quarterback as well. So how did he come to Central Michigan? A little delay handoff this time to Jonathan Ward. Picks up a few yards over the middle. Clock winding down. and Third down for Central Michigan. Looks like they're going to have to take this one into the locker room. Trying to figure things out. Trailing 21-7 to to their rivals. Western Michigan with a big advantage running the football in the first half. And that is paying dividends for the Broncos in this battle for the Cannon Trophy. Molly McGrath, Trevor Maddich, back in studio. Take it away, y'all. Welcome back to Kalamazoo. Scored the half. Western Michigan up 21-7 over Central Michigan as both the Broncos and Chippewas prepare for the second half. And Des, really the story of that first half was Western Michigan being able to run the football and Central Michigan not being able to get anything going offensively. No, you're right about that. You look at Jarvian Franklin's stats. He averaged 9.8, almost 10 yards per carry in the first half. The next running back, Jamari Bogan, he averaged 9.4 yards per carry. And then they Devon Tucker, he came in averaging almost six yards per carry. And then look at Central Michigan. They want to pass the ball, but they couldn't get their passing game on, on track. Shane Morris is actually their leading rusher. So you know things are going really bad for the Chippewas when Shane Morris is the leading rusher for the team in the first half. At 17 yards, Morris is three for 13 passing, just 52 yards. No Tyler Conklin at all in that first half. Quinn met with Coach Bonamigo moments ago. Quinn, what do you got? Well, simply on defense, he said we got to get off tackles, uh, get off blocks and tackle, uh, and probably commit more guys to the box, actually, to stop Western Michigan's run game. Offensively, you know, they had that one spark on that drive where they threw the ball to the perimeter, looked for more of that. He said they've had guys open, but the conditions are so brutal down here that Morris was, was off, off target, you know. As the conditions deteriorate, this league becomes a running back backs league in November. It becomes a running league when the weather's poor. I think that's what you're seeing tonight. And clearly that goes uh, falls into Western Michigan's favor. Thanks, Quint. And Harley C. Quint down there with that camouflage hat he's wearing. <laughs> Blends in with the field very nicely. Quint, of course, always has to deal with the weather, as do both of these teams. We should kick off for the second half. Central defer to start the game, so they'll get the ball to start the second half. And a good return this time by Gerard Davis. Takes it out to about the 28-yard line. Nice, solid return by Davis. Now let's see if the Chippewa's offense can come, up, come out here on the field and, uh, and build off of such a nice return. I tell you what, in the conditions, they don't seem to be changing. So they are what they are, and both teams need to play in the same conditions. So there are no excuses. That's a good point. It's, it's been raining from day one and it, uh, for the very first minute of this game, and it continues to rain as we've got an injured player down here for Central Michigan, Oakley Lavalli. Freshman out of Boca Raton, Florida. A little banged up on that kick, and... Keep an eye on his conditions. It looks like they're looking at his right knee. 21-7, to 7, our score here. Very early moments in the second half. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back to Waldo Stadium after this. Early moments of the second half. Western Michigan leads Central Michigan 21-7 to 7 in this rivalry. And Central Michigan you know, will be very effective usually throwing the football with Shane Morris at the helm. They have not had a whole lot of success tonight. Only 82 yards of total offense tonight. And the weather playing a big role in that one. Although this time Jonathan Ward gets loose along the right side. He's going to pick up a first down. That's one of their best plays of the night. Chris, he's the one who needs to touch the ball. I mean, he's dynamic. He's exciting. And they can give him the ball in many different ways because he's so versatile. And don't forget, when they had that scoring drive, he was the one who jump-started that with a big run early in the drive. So I think number five needs to get 
many more touches. Conklin in motion. Morris the handoff to Taylor along the right side. He's going to get forced out of bounds after no gain. Flag down. This might be a face mask here. Andre Turner eventually forcing Ward out of bounds. Let's see what the call is. And even lose a couple of yards on the run. Personal foul. Face mask. Number five on the offense. 15 yard penalty. Oh, wow, it was on Ward. It was a face mask, yeah. but it was on Ward. Two number fives involved on the play, and it's, <laughs> it's the, the one in yellow who gets five. flagged. Yeah, he had his hand on it. Had the hand on it. Now let's see if he pulls Grabbed it. There it, it is. There it is, exactly. That's, that's, that, ooh, wee, that was. Yeah, good job yeah, by our replay guys that getting one. that one in there. That was too obvious, too. You can't do that. You can touch the face mask, but you can't pull it down like that. We've got a player down here for Western Michigan. It's going to be Antonio Balboni. Left defensive end. He walk off on his own power, so that's at least good to see. Central now with that big 15-yard march, march off here. Whew. After that big play by Taylor, now they're all the way back at their own 28. They're starting over, but this time it's going to be first and 25. The Chippewas are headed in the wrong direction to start this third quarter. Not how um, not how you draw it up. No, Especially not when you're looking for a spark no. offensively and you get it. Exactly, and, they, and they, they've, they've been playing behind the chains so much tonight that they can't get out of their own way offensively, especially on first downs. We'll see what uh, Joe Bonamigo and Chris Ostrowski draw up here, first and 25. Ward back flanking Shane Morris in the gun. They hand it to Ward, he finds an opening, scoots through. Picks up about eight, nine yards before Malik Rucker is able to bring him down. He was that close yeah. to really breaking that one. And he's the guy on the offense who's a game breaker. I mean, if he gets out there in space, he has, um, he's very fast. He has some jets. He's going to be very hard to catch if he gets to the second level. Very strong, too. Yes, out of that first to tackle attempt. So second down and about 17 yards to go for Central Michigan. To try to extend this drive, first drive of the second half. Out to Conklin, first time we've called his name tonight in terms of making a reception, but it's not going to be for much of a gain. Asante Brown is right there to put the clamps on it. He knew the offensive coordinator, Ostrowski, coming out of halftime, wanted to give a concerted, make a concerted effort to give Conklin the ball, give him some touches, screens, little short throws, and see if he can do something around with the ball. But he's not a guy, I mean, he's a big body receiver, big body tight end, but he's not a guy you really want to get the ball in space like he's going to make someone miss. At the most, he may run you over, but that's about it. So you, you kind of want to give him the ball down the field so he can still keep that momentum going vertical. If he stops his feet and he got to put a move on someone, mm -hmm. that's yeah. not his game. Not a whole lot of shake and bake right there. No, right? no, Ward sir. and Ross both now flanking Morris as he drops back to pass. Has a man open down the left side. Makes the catch. That is the 30-yard line inside the 30 to the 25 and pushed out of bounds right there. That was Corey Willis. Finally, these two hook up downfield. They caught Western Michigan in the blitz. Man-to-man -man situation. And Willis made just a fantastic catch. Excellent concentration on the ball with a defender between him and the ball. Look at that. Great job by Willis just staying focused on the ball, concentrating on it. Really good job by 37 him. yards on third and 17 to keep and this drive alive. they needed that. They, they needed, needed that in the worst way. Morris back to pass. Looking again for the end zone. Incomplete. Eric Cooper was his intended target. Cooper had a hard time with it. Sam Beal, nice job defensively. I tell you, that was another really good throw by Shane Morris. Threw it where only his receiver could catch it. Cooper had two hands on it, but just couldn't hold on. We understand, though, it's, just, it's a little wet out there. I'm sure this isn't the first time these guys have played in the rain. 
And when you're in a rivalry game, a game this big, you got to make that catch. You have to make it. On the road, down two scores. That would have been tremendous for the offense. But I tell you what, I think Shane is starting to find a little rhythm right now. Finds Ward out of the backfield, inside the 20, inside the 15, down to the 10-yard line. Goes Jonathan Ward before Darius Phillips forces him out. So getting Ward involved, they'll mark it off at the 8. Yeah, Ostrowski understood that, hey, Ward is our, our most dynamic player. We need a good ball in his hand. I like the way that Shane Morris threw this ball. Under these conditions, he's throwing nice, soft, catchable passes where guys can catch it and then run after the catch. First and goal for Central Michigan, their first possession of the second half. So certainly they made some adjustments inside the locker room that are paying off. This time Ward's going to attempt to pass, and it is incomplete. Conklin was the intended receiver, almost made a spectacular catch in the end zone. And Darius Phillips is like, man, look at my jersey. The guy almost took it off of my shoulder pass. Can I get a pass interference on the offense? Conklin is a physical player, and the, Phillips was between him and the ball. He pretty much just snatched Phillips out the way and came back to try to catch the ball. Phillips was like, what does it take to get a pass interference on this guy? Are you kidding me? No call, no harm, no foul, no catch. Bringing up third, second and goal right now for Central from the eight. Draw play. Morris Touchdown. has a lot of space and will score. We saw them run the quarterback draw earlier. And like we said, Shane Morris right now, the little wrinkle in the offense, he's starting to run the ball more at this Broncos defense. And now it's just a one-score game. Really, that's really good. Big for Central Michigan to come out, take the opening kickoff, and march down the field and get a touchdown. You convert a third and long, and look at Taylor out there leading the way with the block. And yeah, just like you draw it up. He wasn't even touched. Untouched into the end zone. A career high second rushing touchdown <laughs> of the game for Shane Morris. Not usually his Ballywick, but he's getting it done today on the ground and on that drive through the air as well as Michael Armstrong converts the PAT. We've got ourselves a game here. 21 14 in this rivalry matchup in the MAC. Chippewas chipping away. Now down seven. Central Michigan closing the gap here at Waldo Stadium. Now a seven-point game as we go backstage. And Western Michigan converted a player's lounge into a barber shop here adjacent to Waldo. And that's Rashawn Davey cutting your hair, Des. Look at that brave soul right there. Hey, listen, Chris. All I got to say is... Um, You're particular? It's, yeah, and his hair, so it will grow back. <laughs> <laughs> Davey's one of the players here, actually a wide receiver on the team, and he cuts his player's hair. So all I have to do is text him and say, I'm in need of a little work. Je that gentleman yeah. right there could probably use a little bit. Maybe little get the bit. wall beard trimmer on with that guy. <laughs> exactly. I was asking him if I could get the either the Mike Gundy mullet, right, which right. I had to grow the hair a little bit longer. But yeah, with, I, I, the Jesse Palmer, I kind of wanted to see if you I could get the, pull Jesse off the Jesse Palmer. Jesse Palmer, yeah, you can definitely do that. <laughs> He's gonna have a look to go along with that too, though. <laughs> fall, fall a little short in that area. <laughs> Darius Phillips hadn't really been able to get uh, loose, returning kicks and punts tonight. He'll get an opportunity here, or he won't. No, he will not. A short kick right there, taken off by the up man. Yeah, got a little bit of space. Devon Tucker, not bad when you can have a running back as one of your up men taking the kick and getting it beyond the 30-yard line. He took a pop though. Yes, he did. You can hear the crowd the over there at the uh, far <laughs> side. Nice. You know what that is? That's your starting tight end, yep. Donnie Ernstberger, laying out Central Michigan player Alonzo McCoy. And that guy's a senior. He's on the kickoff return team. And, hey, but that's what you get in a rivalry game. I mean, you could go out there and try to lay out your opponent. So it, it means a lot to these guys. It really does. What a tremendous block Ernst by Ernstberger. You mentioned senior, Battle Creek, Michigan. They love this kid because he's not only a great receiving tight end, but they a great blocking tight end, too. Best of both worlds with him. They go back to their power attack with Franklin. Franklin goes for a couple of yards. Michael Oliver on the stop. Quinn, what do you got? 
Well, Donnie Ernsberger last year under Kirk Scirocco, their offensive coordinator, and P.J. Fleck was used mainly as, as an H. And as you said, he would crush people when he'd come across the formation. All you'd have to do is follow number 85. He'd take you to the ball and the bloody aftermath. He destroyed people. But he only had nine catches. This season, he's got 22 receptions, and he's showcasing himself now to NFL scouts. I like the way Quinn describes that, the bloody aftermath. Well, here like he that. is, not going down easy after making that reception. Mark Coleman is there on the stop, but Ernstberger fighting, battling his way. Hey, Des, one thing we've seen at the end, there aren't as many tight ends in college football anymore because of the spread and the proliferation, but in exactly. the NFL level, yeah. tight ends are huge. Oh, no doubt about that. This guy, he get an opportunity. And we have pretty two pretty good tight ends in this game tonight. Yeah. Ernstberger, the way he blocks, and he's a good receiver, receiver too. Both of these coaches think that both of these two will get a shot at the next level, that's for sure. I agree. Big third down here, third and seven for Western Michigan. Can Central get off the field on third down and get the football back? They got a little momentum right now. Goddard looking this way. Can hook up with Keyshawn Watson. So again, another pass errantly thrown by Goddard. And... Western looks like they're going to have to punt it away. Yeah, we haven't seen uh, Western in third and long a lot tonight, so I was really curious to see what they would dial up on that play and they would go to the running game, which has been so effective tonight. Or would they let Goddard uh, sit back in the pocket and try to complete a throw? You know, he struggled throwing the ball tonight. I understand the conditions are not the best, but still, this is what you do. I'm sure, I'm sure this isn't his first time playing in the rain either. Derek Mitchell back to punt for Western Michigan. Both of these punters have had a lot of success tonight. Mark Chapman to field it for Central. Fair catch. Bottles the football. Okay, Waiting for the ball. official signal. Looks like Western Michigan yeah. fell on the football. You know, like I said earlier, Derek Mitchell is a left-footed punter. Derek Mitchell is a left-footed punter, and the ball takes an awkward spin when the left-footer kicks it. And um, yeah, you, you add the uh, the conditions is wet. The most important thing as a returner is to secure the catch. This is a big break for uh, for Western Western Michigan. But a huge play for Central when you talk about a team that. Had all the momentum after stopping Western, scoring on their first drive in the second half. And now you get Franklin, loose into the secondary. Picks and chooses his way, gets about nine yards on that carry. For a guy who's 225 pounds, really, really good footwork in the hole where he was weaving in and out of trouble, getting away from defenders. Now Franklin's just a really impressive running back. So second and one, what do you do here if you're... Look at that. Look Kevin at Johns. Weaving in and out. <laughs> you put it up. Nope. You just no, hand yeah, it off. He's right here. Look at him. Still doesn't go down. Mm -mm. Works his way back across the field and picks up a nice gate on second down. It'll be first and goal for Western Michigan. I know a lot of uh, NFL scouts are here to look at Chooks, number 77, the left tackle. But you have to think that some of these guys are looking at Franklin, too, the way he runs the ball. He's so consistent, too. Great pass catcher. I mean, probably not going to catch many balls tonight because they don't really have to throw the ball. But great receiver out of the backfield. And then, you know, they, they got a pretty good running back in the NFL that came from um, the MAC. A guy by the name of Kareem Hunt. Plays for the Kansas City Chiefs. Used to play for Toledo. There's a lot of, lot of talent in the MAC. Yeah, Jarvin definitely said... Definitely keep my eye on what he does. Bounces it outside. Stiff arms his way into the end zone for a score. Chris, it was like he was just really playing with Josh Cox for about the first three or four yards. And he said, oh, things about to get real, son. <laughs> and then he said, I'm going to show you this Franklin strength. This is grown man strength right here. It was like a little light stiff arm. Hey, okay, all right. You, I know you're trying to get, stop me from getting in the end zone. Hey, buddy. All right. Well, listen. Switches okay, the ball. Listen. Okay, listen. This is about to get real, son. <laughs> Second touchdown of the day for Franklin. <laughs> the 50th of his career. One of now just five players in MAC history with 50 rushing touchdowns. What a career. And what a night he's having. Yeah, definitely. Big night against his rival, Central Michigan. Josh Grant with the PAT. 
Makes it 28-14. Western Michigan takes Central's first blow in the beginning of the second half and delivers one of their own. Thanks to Jarvie and Franklin's second score of the day. Broncos by 14. Coming off a statement win, you either build on the momentum or watch your playoff hopes fade to black. Broncos doubling up the Chippewas here in Kalamazoo, 28-14. And this game's big when you look at what's going on with the Mac. We'll get you to the standings here in a little bit. But now Central's got to answer. They answered to start the second half, Des, but that turnover led to a quick 25-yard drive by Western Michigan. Now it's Central's turn. Yeah, Muff punt was big, but, you know, still a lot of football left to be played. And they still got to be encouraged by the way they came out of the locker room in the third quarter. John Davis fumbles this one on his own one-yard line. Now he's got to make up time and space, and he can't do it. Dropped at the 13-yard line, 12-yard line. That's where Central Michigan will get started. That is not what they needed. Yeah, but they got to be encouraged by the way they came out the third quarter and uh, marched the, the ball down the field for the touchdown. Got a little bit of a flag here. Let's check on what the flag is for. As the officials confer. Again, Amanda Sauer is our referee tonight. See Mitch Heimbuck, the tight Personal end, getting off. Uh, yeah. Targeting on Western. The play is under further review. Mm. We got a targeting on a Western. All right, now we got the play. And we had such a clean first half, too. Let's see. Um, let's get a look at this targeting. Of the alleged targeting. As we get another look at it, targeting is the call against Western Michigan. There's number 14. Yes, Tim Lester has a word with the officials. Looks like it's Lee Wekwoji there, backup running back. Oh. Uh, helmet to helmet, led with his helmet. <sighs> Man, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's this, it's this. I mean, it's moving targets out there. They're moving targets, you know. The runner put his head down also. Uh, that may be what Ekwoji is trying to uh, plead yeah, in terms like he of pleading his case. Yeah, he was going for the tackle. I mean, you can only, you can only move Let's your head to a certain degree when you're going in the tackle. I mean, his head was was down, but still, he... Yeah. Dead head was down, dead led with the crown of his head. Too. Now, yeah. to your point, the ball carrier lowered his head at the last moment right there. Right. But still, 14 exactly. was leading... Yeah. With the crown of his helmet. Yeah. This will be a good look at it right here. McWoji's yeah. head was down. Yeah. Well, he just might get ejected. That's what the yeah. replay officials are looking at right now. Jim Thomas, our replay official here After on the headset. The Player number 14 from Western is disqualified. Targeting is confirmed. Yeah, I knew it. Yep. I knew it. Yeah, I still don't think that was his intent, though. I really don't think it was his intent. He was trying to make a tackle. Sometimes your head's going to, you know, it's going to dip. But that's the rule. So, Ekwoji has been disqualified for competition, which also means he will miss the first half of next week's game. Yep, here are the targeting rules. Just to say, look, and intent. I don't see it. The intent is not on there. It's no, all about no. exactly. the letter of the law. Yep. Yep. So a 15 yard benefit that time after a, a rough return. So a, a big play, actually, for Central Michigan, getting them out from the shadow of their own goalpost. But they can't do anything on first down. It's going to bring up second down and nine. So now Central is going with a check with me system, also looking at the sideline. See if they want to run. Uh, I'm gonna receive the switches. Uh, they they look, to, look a little confused out mm -hmm. there. Still got a lot of time on the clock, though. Shane Morris looking to his right. Finds his receiver out in the flat. Going to be a short gain that time for Mark Chapman. 
Gain of about three or four. Going to bring up third down and six for Central Michigan as they try and keep this drive moving. Even though that wasn't a, a great pass, it wasn't a pretty pass, it gives you an idea of Shane Morris's the, the strength of his arm. I mean, that was clear across the field, in the rain, terrible conditions. He doesn't care. He's going to still throw it on the on a rope to his receivers. Third and six now for the Chippewas. Chapman in motion. Morris is looking his way. Connects that time with Corey Willis. Picks up the first down. Got a flag down. Flag on the play. I think they may get them for a pick play. They may get the Chippewas for a, a pick play. They're talking about it right now. <laughs> Ball on the 46-yard line if it is not, but let's get a let's get word from Amanda Sauer. Chapman's talking. Looks like you may have called that one, Des. Cameron Cole, the guilty party. Yeah, I mean, I think hit number 24. I think he got Ob Jackson on this play right here. Look at Ob Jackson right there. He's trying to go and oh, he got Ob good, didn't he? <laughs> and Ob's like, come on, you didn't see this? Are you serious? Yeah, they got Ob Jackson uh, pretty good on that play. I mean, you got to be an actor to pull that off. I mean, a lot of teams do it. You see it every week. But guys, I mean, you, don't, just, you mean you don't lower your shoulder into the defender? I mean, it was, it was damn near targeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta be an actor, man. So now, like it's a mistake. A first down near midfield turns into a third down from their own 16, and third down in Montana. Morris. Again, miscommunication with his receiver. Chapman broke in. Morris threw it out. Yeah, it's just a bad series for the Chippewas, especially after coming out out of halftime, marching the ball down the field for a touchdown. That was a step backwards for that offense. Penalty helped him after the kickoff return. It did, yeah, then it hurt him after the first down conversion initially with the pick play. So, yep. Fourth and 21, Central forced to punt from deep inside their own territory. Six and a half minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Sheldon with the punt that dies right at midfield. That's where Western Michigan will take over. 14-point lead for the Broncos here in the battle for the Cannon Trophy. Check it, Des. Clemson's got Kelly Bryant back, but they're heading down to Backo Road, taking on NC State and Raleigh. That's a dangerous game for them, and NC State still controls their own destiny. They better be ready for Bradley Chubb and that crew. Yeah, in, the, uh, in their division of the ACC. Meanwhile, speaking of the ACC, Virginia Tech and Miami, they're going to go at it. Miami's still unbeaten. Virginia Tech just one loss, so they're still both those teams alive and well yes, in the sir. chase for a playoff spot. It's going to be fun. Saturday at 8 o'clock is the nightcap there on ABC. Western Michigan taking over right at midfield. Jamari Bogan in the backfield. This running game has had so much success, and Bogan putting his head down and putting it right into the teeth of that Central Michigan defense before Mike Dana can make the stop. See what, Mike Dana's in place uh, for Joe Ausman tonight. Playing a really, really solid game, and they, they're really high on Dana. They say he's coming to his own right now, playing well like he's – he gets it like a light just clicked and he's starting to get it. So, and he's, I um, mean, and I tell you what, Western Michigan, they're coming at him too. Second down and nine for the Broncos. Ernstberger in motion. The handoff again to Bogan, puts his head down, gains another yard. Tough yardage right now for the Western Michigan Broncos. Yeah, not like it was uh, in the first half, but uh, they keep running this inside zone play, and he, you, you can see the running backs, they want to bend it back, but um, I think Dana's playing a really good game at this point. He's really coming to his own. First half, obviously, Western Michigan just ran the ball at will on the Chippewas, but I think Kobe, the defensive coordinator, talked to them in halftime, made some adjustments, and it seems like they're responding so far. 
coming down to five minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Big third down for Western Michigan. Can Central get off the field again? This time keeping it is Goddard and not going to get there. Going to fall short. Mike Dana again with the stop to bring up a fourth and three. And they motion to the short side of the field, and Goddard ran that way. It was like a power play, but it was just too many bodies over there. And he's not a guy who's going to make you miss. He's just, you know, if there's a, a bunch of defenders over there, he's going to put his head down, try to get what he can get, and that's about the extent of it. So he was, he fell well short of the first down on that run. Good look at Tim Lester. An opportunity now for uh, Lester and his Broncos to play a little field position, bringing out Derek Mitchell to punt the football, hope, hoping to. In Central Michigan deep. There's Mark Chapman again. Set to make the return. High punt, fair catch signaled by Chapman. Fumbles it again inside his own 10. And the ball is loose and Western Michigan has recovered again. Wow. And he, um, he, he signaled for a fair catch. So at that point as a returner, it allows you to relax because now you don't have to worry about anyone coming down to hit you. You can just give the ball your full and total concentration, and he was still he still muffed it. The ball is soaking wet, as are the conditions are awful out there. What's it like returning a punt when it's that bad? Well, I tell you what, um, I've been in these conditions before, especially when I was in Green Bay. And, you know, it, it gets so cold up there. And then we had a game we played in the rain. And like I say, the, the most important thing, like you just have to keep re reminding yourself as a returner, secure the catch. Secure the catch. Don't worry about anything else, especially if you signal for a fair catch. Goddard now with the handoff to Franklin. Spinning his way inside the five. Quinn Kessnick is down on the field having to deal with these conditions himself. What's going on down there, Quinn? Well, the rain, it's coming down harder right now than it has all night. You see when this football's left out, uh, you know, un uncovered, it, it gets soaked. It gets soaked quickly. Yeah, the does. center judge is doing a nice job tonight keeping a towel over the ball. But as you said, these specialists are, are, are really struggling. And, and, and the ball boys and these fans right now, we're, we're, we're getting pummeled by rain, fellas. It, it's you're, you're nice and warm and dry up there. It's yeah. bad right now. <laughs> and, and it's showing up in, in the past. Game. Yeah, Quinn is really toasty up here. Showing up here. Bingo, another play. Ball still loose. Central players think they have it, and they do. What's good for the goose is good for the gander on this one. Central gets it right back. No, you're right about that. And I, I want to see if, if Goddard was ready for the snap. I mean, it didn't seem like it seemed like it was kind of high towards his left shoulder. Yeah, it, it squirted right through his hands. Mitch Stanisek is right there to recover for the Chippewas, so they're right back in business, down two scores. He took his eye off the ball, too. That's what happened. He took his eye off the ball. And that's why I squirted right through his hands. And you really need to concentrate more than you've ever concentrated before when the ball is coming towards you um, within, in these elements, in these conditions. You can see both teams with a couple of turnovers on the night. Central Michigan trying to get it done on the ground. Armello Ross fighting his way for maybe a yard. You know, another thing, uh, Chris, is when the ball is so wet and so heavy, you may want to take your gloves off. And Goddard plays with gloves on both hands. And I think the return of Chapman, I think he had gloves on too. I mean, as, as, a, as a returner, as a receiver, anytime the ball got really wet, the gloves heavy. don't help you. No, not at all. You want to take the gloves off. There's Chapman right there, number three. You see, he has gloves on. So that's another thing. Take the gloves off. Morris rolling to his left, finds his receiver, makes the catch. That's Corey Willis. The 38-yard line, that'll be a first down for Central Michigan. I think about, like, the, the golf gloves that are specifically made to be wet. Right, and to exactly. help you, but yeah. you're saying these gloves that they're wearing out there, when they're wet, it's going to hinder their ability to to catch the football less tacky than if you just had the bare hands. Exactly. Well, Willis went down to get that one. Give Central Michigan a first down. There's a good look at the gloves right there. Romello Ross fighting hard for seven yards. Seven. Central Michigan's getting a little running game going. No, they are. And like I said, they came out in the second half and they established themselves, established the run, threw a couple of nice passes. And I uh, guess I'm going with the offense. And here they are right now on the move again. Second down and three. Final two minutes of the third quarter. Central Michigan trailing by 14. 
Ross with the carry. Squirts through. Stretches for the first down. Won't get there. It'll be third and short. It's just a nice, tough run by Ross right there. Looked like they stopped him. He did come out the other side. Really determined, hard, hard, determined run by Ross. Big third down here, waiting moments in the third quarter. Morris looks to throw, keeps it, spins, and he's going to pick up close to the first down. He's right at the marker before Asante Brown could bring him down. They brought Robert Spillane on the pressure, but I tell you what, what really stopped this play was the pressure. He was trying to go to Conklin. Conklin was in the slot at the top of the screen to the left of Shane Morris, and you can see him looking at him. It was a quick out. He would have easily picked up the first down. But he had a defender in his face. Good job of spinning out of a tackle by Shane. Shane is showing us some moves tonight. He's running the ball pretty well. Sp sprinting to his off arm and just throws this one away. Yeah. Just a heads up play. Nothing down the field. Throw it out of bounds. Don't do anything that's going to cost the offense, like take a sack. So really heads up play by Shane Morris. They still want to try to get the ball in the 83 Conklin's hands. They're just really struggling. I think he's actually struggling trying to get away from man to man. You got the Broncos playing a cover four defense in the secondary, and uh, Conklin, as big as he is, as talented as he is, he cannot create enough separation from the defensive backs to get passes. Second down carry that time by Romello Ross. He'll bring up a third down and long from midfield. Ross frustrated with himself. He's had a much better second half, though, as has this entire Chippewa offense. They moved down and scored in their first possession of the second half. A couple of turnovers have been their undoing, but now moving once again. Morris going downfield, trying to hook up with number three, Mark Chapman, and nice defensive play that time by Beal. Sam Beal broke it up. Real good defensive play by Bill. But had Chapman reached out in front of him, in front of himself to, to pluck the ball as opposed to letting the ball get into his body, understand these, you know, terrible conditions, so you got to try to catch it the best way you can. But look at the ball right here, right into his chest. Still should have caught that ball. Well, a little Chris. professional foul there by Sam Beal, too, at a handful yeah. of jersey. No doubt about that. I'm surprised you as a receiver didn't bring that up first. Oh, you know, the refs didn't call it. <laughs> they didn't see it. They didn't call it. Western oh, holds Jack Sheldon now. Got with another the flag Got down. another flag down, and that one's going to go into the end zone. Fourth and nine at the start of the play, so let's check the flag. Amanda Sauer, our referee on the night, checking with the uh, officials who are having a word with Tim Lester. Illegal formation, more than four in the backfield. Five yards will be added to the, to the end of the kick. Punt was a touchback, went into the end zone, so they'll add five yards onto the end of the play. And that's where Central Michigan... We'll try and stop Western Michigan on this drive with just two seconds left in the third quarter. Try and get the football back. They're down two scores. If I'm Central Michigan, I'm putting Nate in the box. I'm daring you to throw the ball at this point. I mean, Goddard has struggled tonight throwing the ball. And uh, he already threw one pick. So if I'm, if I'm Greg Colby, the defensive coordinator, I'm playing cover four in the back end. I'm bringing pressure. I'm bringing blitzes. And just... Uh, See where the chips may fall at this point. Davon Tucker in the backfield now. Part of the stable of backs they've got in Western Michigan. Tucker takes it along the right side, picks up about a yard before Mitch Stanisek is there to bring him down. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. That is the end of the third 28 quarter. to 14, your score, Western Michigan. And Central Michigan, each finding the end zone once in that quarter. It's a 14-point lead for the Broncos. 
One more quarter from Waldo still to come. Chris Cotter, Desmond Howard, Quint Kesnick in his element. There it is right there, the rain in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Home team, Western Michigan, leading Central Michigan 28-14 in this great rivalry in the MAC Conference. A little midweek match in for you. Davon Tucker injured in that last play to end the third quarter, rolled his ankle a little bit. He's being looked on right now over by the Bronco medical staff. And Jarvie and Franklin back in. As Goddard rolls to pass, keeps it. And he's going to run out of bounds after a gain of about four yards on second down. Mike Dana giving him the pressure, and Dana's had an outstanding game filling in for Joe Ostman, the nation's leader in sacks with 10 right. coming in who couldn't go today because of injury. And yeah, Dana's all over the field tonight. Really cause if he's, not, if he's not getting the sack, he's making sure he's in Goddard's face so he can't get the ball off and he's passing plays. He's really um, becoming a force tonight, coming to his own. Big play here for the Central Michigan defense. Try and get Western Michigan off the field, get the ball back into the hands of their offense and see if they can do something here in the fourth quarter, down 14. Eskridge in motion. Goddard fakes the handoff, keeps it himself. Couldn't quite get past the defense that time as Mike Dana makes another play short of the, short first, of the first down. down. Yep. Going to be fourth and about one. Like I said, the thing about Goddard is, you know, he's not a guy who's going to really make you miss out there in space. You know, if he's not strong enough to put his head down and run through you to get the first down, it's just not going to happen. Central Michigan does a nice job of getting off the field defensively. Derek Mitchell will punt. Amari Coleman back to receive this kick. <laughs> Look at Lester's like, okay, you had a little bit to go. Another outstanding punt by Mitchell. Coleman opts to let it drop, and it's down right there at the 26-yard line, and that's where Central Michigan will take over. 13:43 left to go in the fourth quarter. This rivalry game, both these teams, it's the 88th meeting between the two, and they're only 134 miles apart, these two schools, so they are neighbors, and they do not like each other. Like you said, it's just a two-score game right now. There's a lot of fight in Shane Morris and the uh, Central Michigan Chippewas. Offense have really been productive this this second half. I mean, yes, they only scored one touchdown, but man, they were moving the ball. They couldn't get out of their own way a couple of times though. And Morris keeps it on the carry there and kicks it for about gain of about a yard, maybe. Caleb Bailey with the stop. His middle linebacker spot. Empty backfield now for Central Michigan. Morris looking downfield. Connects with his receiver. Another pass catch by Corey Willis. Willis is having a pretty big second half. He really is. He's uh, running good routes, catching the ball. Um, come up with some big catches when they need it the most. Well, I'm looking at the personnel on the field, though, and I still don't see... Jonathan Ward, number five, who I still think is their most dynamic player. Going with, with the Mello Ross here in the second half for quite a bit. Morris again tried to hit Willis in the slot, couldn't do it. Willis with three catches for 67 yards here in the second half. Quinn, what are you seeing down on the field? Well, Shane Morris sometimes continues to struggle on some uh, rudimentary throws. You guys mentioned earlier Michigan. He actually got his degree from Michigan and, and transferred after graduating. 22 years old. He made two starts for the Wolverines. Eventually lost his spot to uh, Jake Rudock and then Wilson Spade. But he said it was the best four years of his life. He and John Bonamigo, the coach, talked about him transferring. And as long as he fit into the culture, you know, the coach was willing to have him be a part of the program. Transfers, it, it can be tricky, Chris, because they can come in and steal jobs, and sometimes that doesn't go over well. Looking to find Willis again. Can't connect that time. Brett Sam Beal on the coverage. Outstanding coverage that time by Beal. Maybe should have picked it. Yeah, well, that's why Beal is a, a defensive back, because he probably is 
can't really catch the ball that Not well. Give that any, that any, was no credence to the fact that it's raining cats and dogs for the last four hours. No, nah, we 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 run out of those excuses now. <laughs> I mean, that that one right there, you got to catch. No, but really good coverage by Bill. He's been uh, you know, they can man him up on any of these receivers. They've been doing it all night long. He's a great cover corner. Obviously, we talk a lot about Darius Phillips, but Bill on the other side is just as capable when it comes to covering wideouts one on one. Third and ten for the Chippewas. Pressure coming. Pass gets away. No flag on the play. Drops incomplete. Andre Turner applying the pressure. There's a cross blitz by the linebackers to get, uh, put some pressure on Shane Moore. He's watching the linebackers. A cross blitz right there. Had to get the ball out of his hands quick. Probably a little faster than he wanted to. And that's why it resulted in an incompletion. Morris and the Chippewas can't move the football. They'll punt it right back to Western Michigan. Sheldon puts his foot into it. Bounces and drops dead right at the 18-yard line. Another outstanding punt. Darius Phillips can't touch the football. Can't hurt you if you can't catch it. 12-21 left to go in this one. Central trailing Western by 14. Buckeyes, after their big comeback win against Penn State last week, slot in at number six in the first college football playoff ranking. But they're on the road at Kinnick Stadium taking on Iowa Saturday. Dangerous game for Ohio State. 3.30 on ESPN and streaming on that Watch ESPN app. Hardy fans here in Western Michigan. Hardy fans. It's been raining all night. Hard. Central Michigan fans making that two-hour trip. As well here, one hand, hoping to catch a great finish to this one. We may have one on tap. Central Michigan's got to get this defense off the field, though, and get their offense back, trailing by two scores, Des. Yeah, they do. I mean, they've shown some, some life this second half, the third quarter. They were really had some big plays, some, some good drives. They scored on one drive, and they kind of stumped their toe a couple of times. But I think that Shane Morris was starting to get into a rhythm. And they haven't been gashed defensively like they were in the first half in terms of the running game. The defense has played outstanding so far in the second half. I mean, they really made some fantastic adjustments in the second half, and it shows. Second and nine for Reese Goddard, the true freshman making his first start today for Western Michigan. Handing off to Bogan. Can he get to the corner? No, he can't get to the edge. That was a great job by Malik Fountain. He shot the gap. We got a player down. We got a Chippewa down. Michael Steinhauer involved. He's down on the turf right now on this play. We'll check in on his condition. Let's take another look at the play. And number eight, Malik Fountain shot through the eight B gap. Really good play. Mike, Mike Dana Fountain. there as well. Yeah, Dana's been playing outstanding the second half. Steinhauer favoring that left leg, the senior from Chelsea, Michigan. He's been banged up all year. Back in the lineup here today. That's a tough break. Western Michigan ran for 241 yards in the first half. Dez just 33 here in the second half. This defense is really stiffened. Yes, they have. They got to get off the field. Though. Yeah, third and seven. This is a huge third down. They have to get off the field here. Can get good field position coming out of this as well if they can stop Western Michigan. And Jarvie and Franklin, Reese Goddard. Franklin had a huge first half. Goddard back to pass. Steps up in the pocket. He's going to run. He's got a whole lot of space, too. Puts his head down and gets the first down. He was trying to go front side to, uh, to Franklin on the wheel route. And when he didn't like what he saw, he just tucked it, put it in his pocket, and ran with it. So he's trying to get Franklin right here on this little wheel route. Didn't like what he saw. Put it in his pocket, put his head down, got the first down. Now, because of the rain, it seems like Western Michigan is content now with going with their 12 personnel. And they are being very deliberate, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Taking their time. Franklin. 
He's got blockers in front of him. Rumbles his way for another first down. Ball on the carpet. See what the officials have to say. Big scrum. And Central Michigan has the football. Jarvian had a big run, first down, and fumbled the football. Alex Briones with the recovery for Central Michigan. That's a huge turnover. And that's very unusual for Jarvie and Franklin to put the ball on the ground like that. And I know we've been talking about all night, and that was just poor, just ball protection. He didn't protect the ball at all. I mean, it's not like he was hit hard. The defender barely grazed him. He just didn't touch the ball. It. Yeah. Darwin Kelly. That wet football rears its ugly head again. Again. So now Central Michigan down 14 points. 10.08 left to go in this contest. Gets the break maybe they need with the ball now on Western Michigan's side of the football field. Now you got to squeeze that ball tight when you're running with it in these uh, conditions. And Franklin knows that. Fake toward. Morris is going to go with the pass. Broken up that time nicely by Darius Phillips. They've been trying so hard to get the ball to their tight end, Tyler Conklin. But you don't want to test that man right there, Darius Phillips. That was almost six going the opposite direction. And that man's done that before. Yes, sir. Look at that. I mean, I think Conklin has played more defensive back tonight than he's played tight end. Second and ten for the Chippewas. Good look at Conklin in motion now. Morris out to Ward. Trying to squirt three. Does. Keeps his feet inside the 30-yard line. What a play by Ward. Tay Ward is a very physical runner. He plays with a, an incredible amount of physicality for his size. And he's a playmaker. He's special with the ball in his hands. And the thing about it, Chris, is he's, he's still learning. He's still trying to figure it out. But once they get the ball to him, he knows what to do with it. Now Central Michigan in business. Shane Morris looking over to the sideline for the call. So Ward brings that combination of being able to make you miss and also run through a tackle, too. He's just that strong and just that physical. There he is again, running through a tackle, using his moves, and you know that's a touchdown for Jonathan Ward. Mike Chapman with a great block to spring him on the outside. 29 yards, and Central Michigan is right back in this one with nine, and, nine minutes and 13 seconds left to go. I know you enjoy seeing a receiver throw a block like Chapman did to spring him. Great block by number three, Chapman. Watch him right here. Here he is. Excellent move, by. But that, There's there you one. go. Here's Pole Jan, too. Yes, sir. And that's, that's what turns like a 10-yard or 12-yard gain into a touchdown when the guys down the field are doing their job, too. And that's why I was so shocked when Jonathan Ward wasn't out there a couple of series ago. Like, he was not out there on the field at all. PAT off the toe of Michael Armstrong. Makes it a seven-point game here in the fourth quarter. Jonathan Ward slipping tackles, getting blocks from his teammates. Great move there. we got ourselves a game here, folks. Central Michigan has closed the gap once again, now to seven points in this rivalry game. And Jonathan Ward with a fantastic individual effort and got some help from his teammates, too. On that last touchdown, he accounted for all 43 yards on this drive and capped it off with this play. So it starts with Jonathan Ward breaking the tackle. You see it right here at the line of scrimmage room. He makes him miss, makes um, Ashante Brown miss, and then it's just all open field running. Excellent with the ball in his hands. He got a couple of blocks down the field. Always helps when the receivers, they do their job out there, too, out there on the perimeter. But, man, he's just a special talent. The coaches, they just get excited when they talk about Jonathan Ward. Squib kick here into the hands of Phillips. Can he make a play? Takes it out to the 35-yard line. That's where Western Michigan will take over. Both quarterbacks struggling today, as you might expect. I mean, the weather certainly isn't helping. Right. Goddard, 5 of 12 for 31 yards in the one pick he had in the first half. Yeah. This it's, freshman quarterback making his first career start. And he's had some, some bad misses, too. I think earlier on, it was like the adrenaline. He needed to, to calm down, settle down a little bit, through some high heaters early. Uh, but 
Seems like he's starting to settle down. I expect him to run the ball more. He dominated the ball on the ground in the first half, but Central Michigan has really bowed up defensively here in the second. How can they get the ball back into the hands of their offense with 9.06 left to go in the game? I tell you what, it seems like Central Michigan right now, they're starting to set the edge. You know, those ends at first, they were able to get hooked, and then the backs were, Western's backs were able to get around the corner, but now they're starting to set the edge, especially 57, yeah, man, Mike Dana. He's I mean, had we've a, been talking about him all night remarkable long. Remarkable game, making the tackle again on Franklin. Dana only starting in this game because Joe Osman, their all-world defensive end who came into this game leading the nation in sacks with 10, is out with an injury. And I may th I think that Dana might be better against the run than Osman. Here goes Franklin again, trying to find some room. He can't find any. Maybe he picks up two. And Franklin is right at 200 yards rushing for the day, but he got the lion's share of those yards in the first half. It has been a struggle for him here in the second. Yes, he did. Like you said, Central Michigan right now, their defense, um, you know, it's not like they're dropping eight in the box. It's just like they're playing more physical now up front. Their linebackers are, are coming and filling gaps too. Big third down here, Dez. Under eight minutes to play now in the game. Goddard looking to throw. Well, this is exactly what they want. They want Goddard to have to try to throw the ball. Chased out of the box, and then he's brought down for a loss. Nate yeah. Brisson fast, chased him down, and dropped him. Trust me, that's exactly what Greg Colby wants right now. You want to get them behind the chains and put number six, Reese Goddard, the freshman quarterback, in a position where he has to sit back there and try to make some accurate throws in the rain with some sort of consistency. Clock stops. 7.32 left to go. Now running. Omari Coleman back to receive this punt from Derek Mitchell. Both these punters have had outstanding afternoons, and they've had to flag on the play, and they're going to blow it dead. Five-yard penalty against Central, so it'll move it closer to midfield, but this will still be a fourth down. Corbett on the offsides. And this is um, this is where the drama is. Has you holding your mm -hmm. breath, especially if the <laughs> if, the, if uh, Derek Mitchell is able to get this ball up in the air and uh, forces Amari Coleman to, to catch it. Partially blocked. Punt is blocked. And it's going to be picked up at the 45-yard line. Dangerous play that time by the Chippewas. Well, we had another form of, of drama in the punt game right now. So the Chippewas came after the punt and blocked it. DeAndre Huge Harvey. Play. DeAndre Harvey with the block. It was picked up that time by Ja'Cory Sullivan. Take another look. That's Left a mid. Yeah, that's a momentum-changing special teams play right there by Harvey. Giving the Chippewas really good field position. 7.02 left in this one. Chippewas have the ball at the Western Michigan 44-yard line. Morris handing the ball off again to Ward. Inside the 20, keeps his feet finally out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Make it to 12. They caught Robert Spillane in a, in a uh, run blitz. He shot the A-gap. And then once that happened, I tell you, you get Ward to the next level, he's a lot to deal with. Mm -hmm. He's too hard to handle for those guys. And out in space, man, look, you see Spillane right there. He shot the A-gap. Ward just bounces to the outside. Come on, Conklin, get a block. He got in the way. Get a block, man. If he, push, if he pushes number one down, that's a, that's a walk-in touchdown. Ward again with the carry. Antonio Balabani with the stop. Rides him to the ground. Gain of maybe a yard. Minimal gain. I'm just glad that Ostrowski, uh, you know, figured out that that Ward is the guy that they're having issues with. The defense, they don't, they can't account for him, especially once he gets through that first wave of defenders. He's a problem. Ward has gone over 100 yards. Second down and goal for the Chippewas, trailing by seven. Final six minutes of this one. 
Willis in motion. Morris back to pass. The lefty fires into the end zone. Caught for a touchdown. Eric Cooper. And this is what a rivalry game is all about. No. Hey, I tell you what, there's a lot of fight in the Chippewas. And it seemed like they were being outplayed by Western. Things just weren't going their way. Turnover after turnover. They kept, they, they stayed together. They kept fighting. And they're just an extra point away from tying this game 28-28. And look at Morris got lit up after he released that football. Cooper making the catch, his second touchdown of the year, and it's a big one. Now Armstrong for the PAT to tie it. The senior knocks it through. And we are all tied up at 28 apiece here at Waldo Stadium. We are set for one heck of a finish, folks. Don't go anywhere. It's Maction on a Wednesday night. ESPN, home of the New Year's Six and the college football playoff. Boy, these two head coaches know a lot about this rivalry. Both of them played in it. Now they're coaching in it. John Bonamigo on the left for Central Michigan. Tim Lester on the right for Western Michigan. And Central has shown all kinds of fight. Down 14 points here in the second half. They battled back to tie the game. 28 apiece. Final 550 to go in this one. And both coaches, as we look at them on the sideline here, Des, very upbeat, just trying to get their kids into it. And Tim Lester trying to keep his kids focused. Yeah, he needs to get his guys going because, I mean, they came out pretty lifeless in the second half. And, uh, wow. And Central Michigan just recovered the kickoff. It bounced off of a, a Bronco, and Central Michigan just recovered the kickoff. You're talking about a tale of two halves. This has been all Western in the first half, and pretty much outside of those turnovers, all Central Michigan in the second half. Look at that play right there. A.J. Thomas falls on the football for Central Michigan. Everything is going right for Central Michigan right now. Trying the squib kick, trying to keep it away from Darius Phillips, and it exactly. hits. Player for Western Michigan. And recovered. You got you you to you stay alert in the front line. You got to stay alert. So here come the Chippewas. And Jonathan Ward with the carry, minimal gain. They're right in midfield, though, with the w rain coming down here. What a crazy night we've had at Waldo. But an exciting game. Wow. This is what rivalries are all about. It looked like the Chippewas didn't have a, a hope or a prayer. They were being outplayed. Turnover after turnover in the second half. Tell you what, this group, they played very inspired and very determined football in the second half, though. They would not quit. Shane Morris, the handoff, and Taylor, Jonathan Ward, rather, is getting his in chunks now in the fourth quarter. I think Jonathan Ward is really starting to surprise these guys with his uh, versatility, the way he's so physical coming through that first line of defenders, and he gets out there on the edge, and he can make you miss. Central Not right there, though. They're on third down, Western Michigan stands up defensively. Yeah, Western Michigan dialed up the run blitz. Caleb Bailey on his middle linebacker spot. Exactly. Stuffs him. Stephen Clark also involved on the tackle. Take another look. No, really good call by Tim Douse right there. The dial up the run blitz. Four and a half in this game and counting. Central Michigan facing a fourth and two from the Western 43. And Tom Bonamigo is going to go for it. Wow, this is a big play here. This is a huge play in this game. Going for it on fourth and play clock's winding three. down. They have to call a timeout here. That's what Coach timeout Bonamigo does. Michigan. This is their first 30 second timeout of the half. First timeout for the Chippewas. He wants to talk about this. What are you going to do here in this yeah. situation? You're going to hand it to number five right there? <sighs> yeah, I try to. I got to get in his hands some way, somehow. Number five has to touch the ball. Yeah. What a tale of two halves we've had. I know. First half, all Western Michigan grinding it out on the ground. Yep. Second half, all Central Michigan, both on the ground with that young man and throwing it with Shane Morris. Quinn, what do you got? Well, Shane Morris has had moments tonight where the quarterback run has been real impactful. It'll be interesting to see if they 
have him make a decision here, whether this is his own read or just a straight give. The one thing, you know, Stephen Clark, big defensive tackle for Western Michigan, the Syracuse transfer, is pretty stout inside. So I want to stay away from running at number 95 in black. Well, Stephen Clark, 6'2", 285 pounds. Young man from Alabama, transferred in from Syracuse. That's a good look at him. He's a low in the middle, too. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting play call right here because, like uh, Quint said, he wants to see if they um, give Shane Morris the option to do some sort of read. And we, we saw earlier when he had a, a zone read play, and at the mesh point, they fumbled. Quick kick by Morris. So opting for the field position play, and it goes into the end zone. So, unfortunately, it's not that much of a gain, and you can see – some players on that central team, including Jonathan Ward, not very happy. Just to gain a 23 yards net on that play after the ball goes into the end zone. Western with the ball when we come back. All tied up here at Waldo. At this point, Coach, isn't it a done deal here? I mean, aren't you already completely waterlogged? I <laughs> know, right? You got those scout team guys <laughs> holding the towel. 28-28, Central Michigan, Western Michigan, all tied up. Set for a great finish. And we have a great finish on tap because Central's been able to move the football desk in the second half, and Western has not. No, it really haven't. I'm trying to figure it out. Outside of the fact that West, uh, that Central's just playing more stout up front, they're, they're holding the edge, they're setting the edge. The guys are making sure that they have their run gaps, their run fits, and uh, the linebackers are playing pretty well, too. So uh, that's the only difference. It's not like they're putting eight in the box to stop Western's running game. Great opportunity for Reese Goddard. Freshman making his first start here, trying to lead Western Michigan down the field. Goes to his tight end. Ernstberger is going to pick up a first down. First down, he goes to his safety valve. Donnie Ernstberger. Picks up the first down, so maybe that'll get him going. He just won for two for three yards before that pass play here in the second half. And that was just a nice, nice, safe throw, play action pass, roll him out to the left, and then obviously you have Ernstberg who has excellent hands, very reliable, a very manageable throw for the freshman Reese Goddard. Franklin now up the middle, dancing, trying to find space. Can't find any. Maybe picks up two, three yards. Malik Fountain there for the stop. Like I said, at this point now, the Chippewas defense, they have their run fits. They're not blowing assignments. They're filling gaps. And that's how they're able to control the Broncos' running game so far. And that time, Goddard kept it. Couldn't get it into the hands of Donnie Ernsberger, though. It's the same play they ran two plays ago when Ernsberger was able to catch the ball and get the first down. They came right back to it, a little play action. That was ugly from the start, though. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Now it brings up third down and eight. Clock stopped at 3.07. Can Goddard and company move the chains and keep this drive going? Rolling. Going downfield for Estridge. Estridge falls down, no call. Amari Coleman on the defense. I think that's a good no yeah, call. That's I it. really do. Estridge yeah, looking for the flag. Yeah, I watched him the whole way, like incidental contact. The feet just got tangled up together, and he fell down. Because as Goddard came rolling to the right, Estridge was the only one over here that I was watching him. He just kind of got tangled up with the defensive back. Good no call. Really good no Tim call. Lester there, another look at the play. See, the defensive back is looking back at the ball also. And you just kind of get incidental contact. Good no call by the officials. Derek Mitchell on a punt. Had one blocked earlier. Gets this one off. Takes a Bronco bounce. Going to be inside the 25. Deadens right there at the 23. That's where Central Michigan will take over. Two minutes and 47 seconds left in regulation in this one. What a great game we've had. Western Michigan controlling the first half. Central Michigan coming out. Gamers on the road to tie it at 28. That's what Maxion's all about. Does Shane Morris have any magic left? Tonight on Sports Center, 1 a.m. Eastern, 9 o'clock Pacific. Following the Mavs and Clippers on ESPN, Mark Teixeira, David Ross, kind of a full breakdown of World Series Game 7. What's really behind the Cavs' slow start, and are the Clippers better off without Chris Paul? Stan and Neal, Sports Center.
1 a.m. on ESPN on the Watch ESPN app. Got a lot of football left to be played here, though. Jonathan Ward back flanking Morris. Morris back to pass. Going deep this time. Has a man. It's caught. Corey Willis. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Chippewas. Corey Willis has had a huge, huge second half. Call him in cover four. And they can't man up Corey Willis. And what a throw, though. What a throw in the Ellis. We've been talking about the rain all night. And, I mean, but how about that throw and catch from Shane Morris to Corey Willis? And we're just talking about just a straight vertical route, right, at, right down the middle. And, and, and Willis has been catching the ball like that the whole second half. On a night when Corey Willis, the senior, who missed three games earlier this year with an injury, wearing number 21, Honoring his former teammate and friend Derek Nash who lost his battle with cancer mm -hmm. three years ago and Willis with a 77-yard strike Yeah, and what happened Chris they caught him in the cover four you have Malik Rucker who's a backup safety who's starting tonight Because Jen Wright is out with an injury the starting safety so then you get Corey Willis on a backup safety in the middle of the field you take that every day all day and twice on Sundays Willis, a career high of 148 yards receiving in this game and this touchdown here. Yeah, you, 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 you love that matchup as an offensive coordinator, as a quarterback. Yeah, you get my guy on a safety one-on-one -on -one in the middle of the field. Please. Morris has had himself a heck of a second half. <laughs> Look at Shane Morris. I tell you what, you got to give that group, and the game's not over, obviously. It's still two minutes and 37 seconds left, but they really, really just fought back in the second half. Not only to make it a game, but to come back to take the lead by a touchdown. So, but this is what rivalry games are and all about. There is still man, two oh minutes and 37 yes, seconds left on the clock. First lead of the game for Central Michigan, but there's time. But the, 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 the issue right now, Chris, is when is Western Michigan going to find some offense in the second half? That's the, that's the, the whole point at this point because I haven't seen them do anything that compared to what they did in the first half, especially with Javari and Franklin. Caden Keon kicking off. How about this young man right here, Darius Phillips? Can he make a huge play for Western Michigan? Bottled up in the 20, and that's where he'll go down. Right now, Central Michigan, they got all the momentum on their side right now. Those guys are amped up. You know, the singers are like, listen, we're not going over against Western Michigan. They're excited. Tim Lester and that group over there on that sideline, they're going to have to get some life out of the Broncos because they've been pretty flat the whole second half. Seven yards in the second half. Yeah, look at them. You're going to have to get some life in this, in this, this drive right here. This is a huge drive. Two and a half minutes for the freshman, Reese Goddard. What can he do with this Bronco offense? Franklin in the middle, looking for space, finds a little bit, bounces it back outside. 30, 35. Stiff arms his way out to the 43-yard line. So a good start for Western Michigan, and we've got a flag. Just really good footwork by Jarvis Franklin. Weaving in and out of the hole, getting away from defenders. Man, I tell you what, he has been the workhorse tonight for Western Michigan University. Personal fast, face fast, defense, number 57. 15 yards on the end, to the end of the run. First down. Mike Dana did what he had to do to bring him down, face mask. But that is going to add 15 yards on what already was a big run. 22 yards for Jarvie and Franklin. And hey, that's what you want to do. If you're the offensive coordinator, KJ, give the ball to your workhorse, Jarvie and Franklin. Good things normally happen when he carries the ball. Goddard keeping it this time, and he'll be dropped for a four-yard loss. Yeah, you don't really want Goddard carrying the ball at this point. Nate Brisson fast is there for the tackle. Tim Lester calling a timeout to talk things over. Second down and long now. Two minutes and eight seconds left to go. What do you draw up here? I mean, your passing game has been non-existent, not just in the second half, Des, for the entire game. I think you run power. I think you run power. I think that's their best play right now. Get a couple of linemen out in front of Javari and Franklin. And, uh, Correction. This is Western Western's first timeout. 
get a couple of linemen in front of Jarvie and Franklin and run the power game, you know, because outside of that, when they run that inside zone, mm -hmm. Central Michigan right now, they're doing a tremendous job of setting the edge and making sure they have their run gap fits with their linebackers. What are you getting physical? What are you seeing down there, Quinn? Well, Reese Goddard, the coaching staff told us about his swagger, about his gun swinging. He's struggled all night, but now would be the time for a play like that. That's right. Kevin Johns, the offensive corner, said the kid's got moxie. Let's see it here. Looking to pass. Flags all over the place. Goddard fl flushed out of the pocket. He's going to keep it. Puts his head down. Gets what he can out of the play. Gets about 10 yards on the play. Let's see what the flags are. All kinds of laundry on the field. Yeah. <laughs> I think every official threw their flag on that play. It's just about. Yeah, I hear what Quint's saying about him being a gunslinger, but um personal foul pass to facing defense. Holding number sixty-one offense. Those penalties offset. Second down. So that's why there was so much laundry. There was yeah, exactly. so many infractions. <laughs> There's a lot going on in that play. Penalties offset, they'll replay yeah. the down. Now under two minutes left to go. Second down and 14 for Western Michigan. Trailing by a touchdown. First time all game they've trailed. Let's see how they respond at home. Reese Cotter, this true freshman, making his first start for the Broncos. Goddard looking to pass. Let's it fly. Has Eskridge out there. Can't make the catch. Eskridge is one of their playmakers. He has to make that, that, that catch. He has to make that play under these circumstances. Oh, oh, right in right right the bread in basket. Man. Yeah, right in the bread basket. That, that was right at the first down marker, too. Now it's third and 14. They have a pretty young receiving core. They do. Eskridge is the one player that... Kevin John says the guy who can take the top off of defense, but he's got to make that play. Either way, you got to shake it off now. Third and 14. Exactly. Goddard's got to go back to work. Gets protection. Goes right back at Eskridge into double coverage. Nice defensive play that time coming over. He had two men on him, too. And Alonzo McCoy with a nice play up in that safety spot. Exactly. Mark Coleman was there, too. Talking about how the coaches uh, call Goddard a gunslinger. Yeah. And um, well, fourth and fourteen. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna need to see it here. It's a little different when the bullets are live. Yeah, this practice. is gonna be it right now for Western yeah. Michigan if they can't convert here. Franklin in motion. And now we're gonna get a delay of game. False start, five yards, all the same. So it's it was already fourth, fourth and, and nineteen. It's another five yards, right? Run the same play. Motion Franklin out of backfield. Empty set. Throws it up. Has his man, and it's dropped. Sean Watson had it, and he had enough real estate for the first down, and he couldn't hold on. And these young receivers are making plays tonight for their young quarterback, Reese Goddard. Two huge drops when they really couldn't afford to drop the ball. On this drive right here, one drop by D. Eskridge, and then this one right here by Keyshawn Watson. Just 
Yeah, I mean, God, God, I, you got to give God credit. He delivered the ball where it had to be, um, where, where it could be caught. But the guys didn't make the play. Central Michigan takes over. Minute 39 left to go in this game. Two timeouts for Western Michigan. Just a good look at the freshman, Reese Goddard. Now Central Michigan will just try and run it out with this man right here. Jonathan Ward has had a heck of a second half, and it keeps going. He's look keeping his look feet. At Ward. Look at Ward. I'm telling you, for a guy his size, he Still runs going. with incredible physicality. Really, just... It's amazing. That's why the coaches, they look at him. He's think he's not amped up. Think he's not excited about about this rivalry. Helping his seniors out. Ward's just a sophomore. Exactly. Kid from Kankakee, Illinois. He knows his senior teammates Time have out. never beaten Western, Western, Western Michigan. Michigan. That's right. That is our second 30 second timeout. You think this uh -huh. game doesn't mean something to him? Just look at him. Look at that emotion. No, se no senior class has ever right. gone without a win in this rivalry. And Central yeah. Michigan needed to win today to prevent that from happening to them. And they're on the verge of doing it right now with a minute 25 left. And I was on the field before the game talking to a couple of their coaches, and they expressed just how important this game is for them, how much their players want to win this game. It was not just another game to them. This is the game to the Central Michigan Chippewas. Broncos with one timeout left. Minute 25, there's the Cannon Trophy. The last 10 years, it's been awarded to the winner of this game. Five times to Western Michigan, four times to Central Michigan. They're looking to even that score right here. Ward, again, powering his way through the middle. Gain of another 10 yards. And a late flag comes in. interception in that championship game last year obviously frustrated going out in this great rivalry with a loss Well, clearly be a challenge yeah. for these two coaches. Yeah. I mean, Tim Lester now is going to have to rally the troops around. And yep. did very disappointing loss the way they handled this game in the first half. And then on the flip yeah. side of that, John Bonamigo, he's got to look at this as such a great character-building win for his team to be down in their rivalry game on the road and to come back and win. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about that. I mean, the character this team showed, the fight, the grit. Oh, man, this second half, just a totally, completely, totally different team than what we saw in the first half. And that goes... That goes both ways. Uh, Western Michigan, they just imposed their will on Central Michigan in the first half. Ran just about any running play they wanted with success. And now the Chippewas are lining up in the victory formation on Western Michigan's field. And if Shane Morris didn't have the locker room before tonight, well, he certainly does now, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, he does, no doubt. And I think we both think they found a star in running back Jonathan Ward. Yeah, Ward's a player. He's a heck of a player. He's the total package. And, um, you know, like I said, in Western Michigan, I mean, they talking to those guys, and they tried to downplay the rivalry. It's just another game. In Central, they're like, no, this is the game. Shane Morris takes a knee one final time for the Central Michigan Chippewas who come into Waldo Stadium, the campus of Western Michigan, and come back from a 14-point second-half deficit to get the win in this rivalry and take home the Cannon Trophy for the first time in four years. Chippewas, Mark Coleman, senior captain. 
You see him celebrating. What a night for Shane Morris. Jonathan Ward. Credit to Mike Dana, too, and an outstanding game on the defensive side of the ball. Central Michigan wins the Cannon Trophy. 35-28 over Western Michigan. Not a sports center. Hope you enjoyed it, folks. We'll see you next time around with Maxion. Chris Cotter, excellent call tonight. Indeed, the victory cannon headed.